Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? All right, you young whopper snappers. The old men are back. Ah. Well, we're going to spit in a spittoon and well, Cappy's going to drink whiskey or rum or whatever the hell he drinks. I don't know. So we're going to tell you about math. Today's going to be about the book of numbers and why you kids ain't living your lives right. The hell's the matter with you? I have Sam Bada. He's also an old man. <laughs> Somebody, you better be nice to that guy. He's in the chat today, moderating for us. Talk about the book of numbers. Coming up. There we are. There we are. That's for you. Wait, wait. No, this one's for you. Hold on. Wait. Yeah, that's for Captain. Uh, okay. uh-huh. <laughs> Captain Capitalism himself. Had I known he was going to have his glasses on today, I would have changed things up. I, w- I would have changed the theme song to Highway to the Danger Zone. <laughs> Well, I had thought this one through. through. I got a little echo, actually. Oh, you do? Oh, hang on. Let me uh, let me switch over. Hang on. That was. Uh, let me pull that off. Because you, you said. said uh, there we go. Much better. Let's do. Let's do uh, four o'clock central too. I'm like, oh, that'd be great. I could get my eye exam, and then like, oh, okay, we're gonna dilate your eyes. I'm like, oh crap. So I can't see anything. <laughs> I'm not trying to be modern life, John. You know, no, I, no, no, no. I, we I know do know that. I'm indoors. Yes. I'm yes. Indoors. Yes. But you just had your eyes dilated. Do you need glasses now, old man? No, no, I'm not, though. You're like old you know, bean. Old, <laughs> your, your old impersonation. I'm starting to sound like that, where I'm like, listen, you kids in the 80s, we're da da da. And now I'm like, God, now I know why my dad was so pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, no. Uh, they, she said my left eye was perfect. The right eye doesn't need anything. But she gave me a prescription if I wanted it anyway. She says, but you don't, you don't need it. So I'm good to go for another two years. Nice, nice, nice. I just got. Um, I, I'm not wearing them now. Actually, I should have actually put them on. I got new glasses myself not too long ago. Um, I I don't wear. <laughs> Let's talk about our glasses. <laughs> Get Rich, Rich <laughs> Cooper with it. <laughs> Rich Cooper with his cheaters. What? Yeah. <laughs> What's the weight set on? I can't. Oh, fifty. Pounds. Buddy is like I. Uh, I just got. You probably know this already. I got back from Miami not too long ago. <laughs> And that was quite the experience. That was fun. Uh, I really enjoyed myself while I was out there. And Myron Gaines really took care of me. And he takes care of all of his guests. Myron's a pro, man. I, for a yeah, young guy, is. I'm kind of impressed how professional he is. He's you know, yeah. like one of those yeah. whippersnappers. He, um, I, he put a lot of money into that studio. Um, it is a, let's just say he's in a high rent district. <laughs> uh, that beautiful background there is real. That is not a green screen. I, I was out there on that patio myself. Uh, very nice, very professionally set up. It's a, he's got like a five or six camera rig. Um, he's got a, a professional guy who's, uh, does the, uh, production for him, uh, yeah, reads, fresh. The, reads the super show. Well, you know, fresh is kind of Not like fresh. fresh is, I don't want to, you know, uh, Myron's a, Myron's a good guy and he's uh, no, no, no heat on Myron here, but fresh is the brains of that outfit. Let me tell you, man, <laughs> he, I, I spent more time with fresh than, um, uh, than anybody else that whole time. And I, I got to meet, um, Hotep Jesus, who I have known about as yeah. long as I have known you. Mm-hmm. And, um, so that was the first time I actually was was there with him, and uh, but Fresh knows his stuff, man. He was helping me sort of like uh, optimize my my Instagram and doing some other things. So, you know, it's it's not that I can't do it; it's just that I'm not like thinking to do it, right? I'm thinking more content. I'm a content creator, I guess. I'm an ideas guy, and so it was nice to to sort of sort of uh, you know sit down with him and and d- decide you know figure out what it is that I can do, right? It's like oh, there's this new thing that's called in the internet. And it's a uh, it's Instagram, and it's like no, dude, I I get it, <laughs> I actually do, but uh, I've been reserving my Instagram for like a Greyhound pictures for probably as for probably too long, so <laughs> so that's it was nice to be down there, but he does have a very professional rig. In fact, I would love to get you down there at some time. Um, 
I'm, I might go back uh, at the end of this month. I will see. It depends on like he's trying to get some uh, some other uh, guests on there, and so we've been been doing a lot of work with with him. Um, but I'd you love and, to. I, you know, I, you I, but I, it's what's that? I would like to get you and I down there. That would be awesome. I well, as you know, I mean, speaking of only so much time in a day, I mean it's tax season, and I'm moving, and I have to switch over my LLCs, and now I'm in LLC W nine hell. Mm -hmm. because I have a new LLC and now I got to switch all my, you know, Amazon and YouTube and all that to get the right EIN number to the new company. So they pay the new company. I don't pay Minnesota state income taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a delay because when you change your EIN and your bank account, it mm -hmm. sends up a red flag. And I understand for security purposes, but now it's stuck in uh, Amazon bureaucrat uh, bureaucratic hell. Mm -hmm. where it's like, well, I hope you guys pay me in about two months or so because I will need some money for, for the closing of my house. And mm -hmm. so not to mention may, paying first quarter taxes. So yeah, I, I'd oh, like man. to go down, but it's, this is, this is the unsexy side of being a YouTube uh, internet person. Yeah. Not, or an author for that matter too. You know, yeah, you know, I, I, um, I got, you probably got caught up in this as well as I remember back in, I think it was like in the end of October, beginning of November. And I don't know what they were doing. At uh, at Katie at Kindle Direct Publishing, but uh, they were monkeying around with like, oh, we're, we, your 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 direct deposit uh, numbers need to be changed or something. What the hell? I, like, I have never had to do that in like eight years of working with you guys. Where is this all coming from? I I didn't change anything, so it must have been something that they were doing. And I think honestly, I think uh, KDP, uh, if you are a self publisher, by the way. Um, they are they're doing something they're monkeying around with something over there um i'm i i am on one i'm on the list of authors right now where i get to do beta testing for new things that they're doing cool um so uh and then uh, i'll just say this right now there is uh, a distinct possibility they might be uh offering uh hardbacks <clears throat> Carbacks in uh, the near future. So uh, that might solve a really big problem for me, which is because I was looking for for that for a long time outside and I didn't want to sort of lose my my Kindle um, uh, Kindle select status because I really like that. It's nice because it gets it, it gets it into gets my book into other markets and other uh, audiences that I wouldn't necessarily even think of. And so I didn't want to lose that, but I still wanted to get a hardback. And the only place I could go is like through Barnes and Noble or um, like Lulu or there's some other there's some other places like I think uh, uh, Ingram Spark does it as well. But I was like, I was trying to weigh my options, but now it seems like they're going to be able to do that soon. So it's it's real nice. But yeah, I mean, working with those guys, it's like whenever I have a problem, it's like you have to go call Thailand or wherever. Right. No, I haven't talked to one American yet. So yeah, uh, not not to throw a wrench in your plans, but have you gotten your 1099 from uh, KDP oh, yeah. yet? Oh, yeah. You did? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mine that, was completely wrong. I'm looking at oh. it. I'm like, I, I wish I could report this to the IRS, but unfortunately, you guys are off by a factor of like 10. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's, that's the fun time there. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have a new book, though, and I, I did the cover for it. And I've been meaning to get you on here to talk about it for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, if you saw the thumbnail, that was me. I did that for 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 Cappy, for our Uncle Grumpus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for people who don't know who, who Aaron Clary is, you have how many books? Let's just give them every, everybody a quick background. I think pretty much all my audience knows who you are. but I, I think so, yeah, but very briefly, I have about eight or nine real books, and then I also have like backup books for my blog, which is just a compendium, so I don't really count those. And the vast majority of my books are around the themes of finance, economics, um, with, a, with an angle, a target for men, although some of them are, are asexual, uh, men and women both targeted, mm -hmm. but it, it is more or less, uh, you know, I'm the finance guy of the red pill community. So if you want to learn about 401ks, IRA, retirement, entrepreneurship, what to major in, what not to major in all that kind of thing, I'm, I'm the go-to guy for that. So I have a, a suite of books out there to touch on all those topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bachelor pad economics. That's probably, that's, that was my, I think that was my basic int introduction to your stuff and then i sort of went and looked at your back catalog <laughs> once i started reading yeah that. that's that's the starter drug and then other people go different ways and that but yeah that's kind mm -hmm. of probably my uh flagship book that most people know me for and then then they go and explore the other stuff as well right 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 so uh and, and you have a degree in economics or are you is no i have a you degree come from in the finance, finance sector yeah I know. Yeah, I have a degree in finance. I was an economics major. I love economics, uh, and I was an economist at one time, actually. Uh, but mm -hmm. I have like a 15-year career in banking, 
uh, start off as a credit analyst where I analyze financial statements. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say got promoted to banker. Mm -hmm. It's not really a promotion. And then uh, vice president at a small piddly bank, which is like saying you're you're the vice president of the He-Man Woman Haters Club uh, from Alpha Alpha and the gang. It's just it's a piddly mm -hmm. little bank. And I was also an economist as well. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I do have years experience in the field. All right. I, I want to um, I want to dig into your latest book, which is the book of numbers. And I want to ask you, like, why you why you wrote this and what was it that sort of motivated you? Like you and I have done we done we've done at least two uh, episodes in the past. I'll link I'll link them in the in the at the end of the video here so you guys can go pick those up. But we talked about um, uh, the sexual marketplace, the global sexual marketplace and the economy of this global sexual marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, when we did the rule zero live or not so online live uh, event, that was kind of your theme there. It was that you're crunching numbers as to uh, what the, I guess, return on it, uh, the ROI, the return on investment was for um, uh, I guess having a wife or, um, you know, pursuing women. And really that's the sort of the sub title of this, right? Which is the, right. the, the ROI on pursuing women. Correct. The ROI on the pursuit of women. Yep. So what was your, what was your thought process on this? Cause I have seen a lot of guys around the manosphere and it's particularly in the MGTOW communities right now who are using yeah. this as kind of like, they, they love this man. This is red meat for those guys because they're like, see, here it is black and white numbers, numbers, numbers. And it's like, so what was it that motivated you to do it? Well, in part that there are a lot of motivations, but the the primary one uh, was I'm going back to economics, uh, which mm -hmm. is my I hate to use the word passion, but that, that's what I'm most intellectually interested in. Mm -hmm. And we could talk stock market and GDP and China and international trade and all that stuff. But what uh, a lot of my research and studying and writing and even just sitting down philosophizing came up with, start mm -hmm. to realize the the real front line of economics, the most important issue facing economics has been the complete degradation and, and decay between male and female relations. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is if we ain't got no humans, we ain't got no economy. And on a secondary level, especially as it pertained to uh, the red pill community and men of the interests of men, because this book would be of interest to women too, if they wanted to read it, but mm -hmm. they don't. So I, I obviously tailored towards men <clears throat> is that you are not going to have a single larger uh, expenditure of time, money, mental facilities and just general resources than pursuing women. Mm -hmm. And if you look at historical, not just global economic production, all time throughout all of human history, historical global GDP, n n not nearly everything, nearly every major innovation and technological advancement has been uh, created and brought into the existence by men. And darn near 90% of GDP and global economic production has been produced by men. Now it's slightly changing again as women enter the labor force, there's technological advances and all that. Mm. But as an economist, I'm like saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so you're telling me the only reason men get up in the morning and go to war and get jobs and work hard and create electricity and all that make cars is because they want a woman, they want sex, they want to fall in love and all you girls are getting fat and you're gonna tell us you don't need us. Because what some old boomer hags from the 60s and 70s came up with a cute theory that's been around for 50 mm -hmm. years. And people, it hasn't happened. Well, it's happening, but people don't see it yet because people don't look at data or statistics or, uh, you know, the Fred Economic Database. Mm -hmm. But you are starting to see the engines of economic growth, which is men, slow down. Mm -hmm. And the analogy you could paint is, okay, men predominantly have always been the main engines of economic growth, production, and resources. <clears throat> and female youth and beauty is the fuel that fueled it. Well, whereas, and maybe you had an experience with this, with high-octane fuel being put in snowmobiles, but mm -hmm. usually yeah. running on, you know, 105, 106, and man, there's some good-looking girls, and they get you up in the morning, and that's why we go to war, son. And now we're feeding uh, our men like octane 53. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this Man down. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the, and the fuel nags you and then it divorces you. And as an economist, I said, okay, before you invest your entire life, which is what you're going to do pursuing women, it's, it's the single largest expenditure of most men's lives. Has anyone done a cost benefit analysis? And that's what mm -hmm. this book is. It's really just a cost benefit analysis where I calculate what are men going to pay in terms of all forms of resources? And mm -hmm. then what are you going to get? And that's measured in the form of various success, be it a date, all to getting laid, 
uh, to finding a, a being happily married. Mm. Hmm. Uh, I got the, I'm going to throw this out there just real quick. Cause I think you got an answer for this as well. This is Aaron's book is unnecessarily pessimistic. Uh, well, I mean, is it, is it unnecessarily pessimistic or is it just simply pragmatic and it's, it's information and data that is sort of unflattering to what we would otherwise think of as like, sort of like romantic ideals, like romantic idealization. Do you think it's, un, did you, did you intentionally make it un pessimistic? Every time I've been accused of being a pessimist. <laughs> I've been proven right every time. The housing crisis, the Asian currency crisis, the dot com bubble, mm -hmm. I, 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 and I, I don't care. You know, no, and I and I don't. Uh, I don't take offense. I just don't care about the insult. You're being pessimistic. You're being biased. No, these are numbers. I hired an actuary to make sure the numbers were tight, mm -hmm. as tight as they could be in the social science. I made all the mm -hmm. intellectually honest assumptions. They're the numbers. I mean, if you don't like if if four plus four equals eight is pessimistic, oh well, I got I got news for you. You're gonna you're gonna get new terms of pessimism and optimism. But no, it is it is an academic study. Uh, even in the beginning, I dedicate an entire chapter to the assumptions, the weaknesses, and the numbers. I even mm -hmm. make a call like, hey, if you happen to know better data or a better technique, let me know. No one's contacted me yet. So, uh, but I'm, I'm very confident in my numbers and I'm very confident in work that my actuary did. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's funny that this guy, come, I, I knew this, this question was going to come up. So I actually put the, I've got a, I've got quite a list of notes and some questions here for you too. So, um, so the, um, yeah. And one of those, I was, I've got a, on my second section here, it's the ROI on dating, marriage and sex, um, the romantic ideal versus the sexual economy. And I think that that's one of the things like when you get that, um, when you get that sort of criticism, I think that's that's not uncommon. Well, well certainly not for me because I usually uh, am throwing out kind of some kind of unflattering, uh, you know, facts or some just like some data that that's not. And it's not me going and like digging for it. It's like it's right there. I mean, anybody can right. go get this stuff. Anybody can get your stuff. You just happen to aggregate it. But one of the accusations, and I'll I'll, I'll lay this question at you too, is a lot of people think that. Um, when you do do what you're doing right now, like you're saying, okay, well, here's the here's the hard data. Uh, it's better to rent than it is to own, kind of th kind of thing. When it comes to, to I can I can guarantee you that too. Yes, if it yes. floats, flies, or fornicates, you rent it. Yes, right, right. And so when you say something like that, I think people think it's dehumanizing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like people think well, yeah. that you're, you're not, you're not, oh yeah, that's not very romantic. That's not very loving. What about love and kindness and all this, like these intangible things that are, and I, I understand why people default to that because we live in this age of emotionalism right now. But what do you like, how do you sort of feel that question when people say it doesn't, isn't all these hard numbers and everything, isn't that kind of dehumanizing? Can't like, can't love conquer all yeah. cap. Yeah, but it, it is dehumanizing because they're numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's a very, uh, dispassionate, unemotional analysis that I've done. And the reason I did that is my, my intended audience for this was not people with fifis or intellectual weaklings who let feelings and emotions interrupt. I mean, this is why I could, one of the main reasons I was able to be a very good economist and predict different things that happened is because I didn't let emotion. Now you remember the dot com bubble, and mm -hmm. people were talking about the oh I belong to an investment club, and you remember the housing bubble. It was like oh the value of my house. It, 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 they were you, wait, wait, hold, wait, 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 hold that thought. Hold it. Did you see that movie, The Big Short? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I just yeah. watched it for the first time last night. Really? Too. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I but, continue. Uh, but anyway, so it and and. The humans are emotional and that's their flaw. And I'm more than happy to take advantage of that flaw, uh, be it investing in the market or being a better economist than the guys on Wall Street or whatever, you know, uh, speculation. Um, but it, it doesn't change the fact that if I'm going to do an actuarial analysis, and we're talking about ROI, meaning rate of uh, income versus mm -hmm. cost. Uh, yeah, that was the whole point of this book is let's remove emotion out of it. Because I don't know if you've noticed this, there's tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of men globally, certainly, mm -hmm. who have become uh, have paid a huge emotional price, a huge psychological price, because they let their emotions get in the way of reality. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 and it's even I had a hard time. And then I admit, I'm like looking at the data, I'm like, am I off by a decimal point or two? Like, it can't be that bad. And then we went back and I contact my actuary. I'm like, did you get the same numbers? Like, yes, I did. Let's check the data again. And even I didn't want to believe some of this stuff. But in the end, 
as a statistician, a mathematician. Doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> it doesn't matter what it feels. It, it's like yeah. here's the numbers, and so that's what I want to do is kind of give this book and, and use it as a metaphorical slap across particularly young men's faces. Like, okay, look, I understand you're in Lerf and she got big, big old titties. Okay, I got mm -hmm. it. All right. In the meantime, at least read this book so you're not going in completely blind and you know not only the risks you fake, uh, face, but what you're going to have to do to overcome these odds and statistics. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and I don't, you know, I haven't given a damn about people's feelings in about 10 years. I, I really don't care. <laughs> Neither I did, the less I care. <laughs> I don't care. You people, not you, but but the people out there, let's vote for socialism some more. That'll work. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's look. I mean, it's like, forget it. Just never, you know. So I, I, and I've been called every name under the sun long before any of this happened because I dare to say, you know, what is it? AOL was overvalued. I was like, forget it. I, I, so I, they could critique, they could get upset. But what I'd really like is a statistical critique or saying, oh, you forgot. What about this? Like a, a constructive criticism, a mathematical criticism. And because I would mm -hmm. actually heed that. But if, if you're telling me that I'm mean because <laughs> one of the more interesting mm -hmm. statistics, you could look it up. They have like a, it's got like a decision node tree. And mm -hmm. uh, there's been three, to my knowledge, of these studies done where they start with the number of swipes men have gone on dating apps and then mm -hmm. the number of matches. And then it just whittles down exponentially rapidly to the mm -hmm. number of dates. Like, th that's your numbers. There's your statistics. I, that's what I care about. But, you know, if you want to heed me on that, no, fine. If you want to you know, say that, that I'm mean because I point out this reality, well, mm -hmm. that's your problem. Yeah. I got, I got to throw this one out there. Uh, Red Pill Mike says, we live in a day and age where pragmatism is being called pessimistic. Yeah. And the hopes, uh, the hope strategy is being called optimistic. Uh, neither are, neither are coincident or uh, coincided, I guess. That's an interesting one. And I bought Aaron and Rolla's books. Numbers, uh, numbers is weak. I don't think so. Well, go, tell tell me where tell me where he's wrong. Tell, tell yeah, me I mean, Rafi has spot. every right. Yes. Yeah, he could he could tell me. I'd like to know because I wanted yeah. to be his title. I yeah, and you. It's funny because you run into like a very similar criticism that I do because I'm usually hit on for like the tone. Like I'm I'm relating some like pretty harsh realities and some it's data, man. I like I said I, I just work here, man. <laughs> And so if I'm relating that and, uh, and it's usually women will say, well, you know, you know, people would really relate to this or they would they would learn from this if you would just change your tone. I'm like, what can I change? man? <laughs> it's like the numbers, the data. This is this. This is what I'm what I'm seeing here. If it if it offends you, there's not really much I can do about that. So like when people hit me up and they say, well, you know, you look like a wet noodle and you're white and you're skinny or you know, what you, know, you could throw all the, you know, you know, insults at me all you want. It's like, what do you have a problem with, with what I'm saying? And what do you have a problem with, with the numbers that are in the book, right? Is there some, is there some hope that we're not seeing as a, as a result of this? It, in the end, and you and I are both a little bit older, like maybe when I was in my teens or twenties, I would have cared. Right, right, right. We're the we're the Waldorf and Statler or Statler right. and Waldorf. <laughs> Whatever you and I get together. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be poor old Myron trying to do a do a comedy skit like yeah, Fantasy Worth. Yeah. Food at him. Yeah. We, should, we should do that. We should have like this little like what it's little box up, up somewhere. They can splash to us, and we can just ah these kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, I run into that. Too. It's like emotional investments. And I get that too. I mean, I understand why it doesn't feel good because we want, we're so used to uh, this. And I, I outlined this quite a bit in my own new book, which is religion. Um, I the, the romantic ideal and how invested we've been in it for, and how long we've been invested. And yes, I realize it's not just a recent uh, occurrence. It's something that's been going on really since like the, the Renaissance, you know, where we've been invested in this, this, uh, you know, lift women up and, and pedestalize women and uh, fight for a lady's honor. And let's add them to the chivalric code. And now we've suddenly, you know, in 2020, it's uh, well, your data feels bad. And so, so it must be flawed, right? <laughs> Well, and uh, I understand people have emotions and feelings and we're human and, and I don't mm -hmm. even necessarily fault people for that. 
Um, and I'm not even saying don't, don't, you know, abandon that. There's a piece of me. I wish I was more human like that. I wish I wasn't so cynical or jaded or pessimistic. Oops. Mm -hmm. That's translation for being right all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but all I'm asking is that in addition to you getting the googly eyes for a pretty girl mm -hmm. or you, you go out and date, I'm not saying don't, I mean, yeah, go fall in love. If you can find it, that's great. But, but for your own mental health, and this is one of the other main reasons I wrote the book is just even for guys who aren't young and naive, who just went through hell, you know, went through mm -hmm. divorce, whatever. One of the great things about this book is just basically to say, yeah, it wasn't you, dude. You weren't insane. It is this bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, and here's the numbers to prove it. So I've gotten a lot of compliments of that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Just use it in a, of all the many quivers in uh, in your air or uh, arrows yeah. in your quiver it's better to know than not to know right. man it's like what would right. you I, and i'm gonna actually i'm probably not quoting ryan on this he probably got it somewhere else but it's like would you rather be happy or would you rather be right you know preferably both right i mean you'd rather be, be be knowledgeable make good decisions based on good you know data you know educated decisions let's just say better to make those decisions from an educated perspective than to just go oh well, I, I just followed my heart no, yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why you're probably in debt. <laughs> right. And another uh, thing you'll find is if if you if you want happiness, you long term anywhere, you better follow the truth because if you follow lies, you're, you're, that happiness is fleeting; it's temporary. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you know, any guy who's been married and divorced, you know, oh, yeah, I'm in love and it's the hard day doo, 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 till mm -hmm. death do us part, and then all of a sudden they'll they'll tell you. So no, it is absolutely that's not even a a philosophical question. It's like you need to know the truth because long term happiness is not possible without it. All right, I got. I, I'm going to get into the nuts and bolts, but this is a really good one to sort of segue into it. Say, so says, uh, write a book on the ROI of seeing escorts. <laughs> okay, so so that I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you, Evan, for your question. Um, and I got I got to get this out of the way. Okay, there you go. Are you guys happy now? I would keep seeing this in the stupid chat. Okay, <laughs> I did. I have the drop. Thank you very much. They sent me the drop. There you go. Um, so I, I wanted to, this is in my notes here. It's like on the ROI of dating, marriage, and sex. Um, do you think this, like after doing all of this data and you, you living your life as the minimalist that you are and, and, and the financial guy, cause you, you kind of apply financial and economic perspectives, like to, I guess, romantic situations, right? So right. do you think, do, do you believe, do you think this, um, do you think that, uh, wives and girlfriends are a luxury item? Do you think that they're like. Yeah. Well, no, because if, well, are we talking in general wives? And Is it like, well, you know, when you buy something that's like not necessarily going to like build your business, it's just something that you like just because you like it, right? Like it's nice. Like instead, like, I don't know what kind of motorcycle you have, but I don't think you have a Harley. Like no. instead of getting a Harley, you got a Honda or something like right. that. Would it, would that be the, something similar? Like oh, I got a girlfriend, she's really hot. And uh, that's something that I really feel like I need. Or is it something that's sort of like a luxury item, knowing what you know about ROI of it, the sexual marketplace? Yes, it is a luxury item by today's statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you're, if you're lucky, it pays off. If she's a wonderful woman until death do you part. So then you, then you, that's a lottery. So let's put that in a separate asset category called you won the lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the remaining rest of you uh, who are divorced or unhappily married. Uh, yes, it is uh, a luxury item. Uh, and it's a depreciating asset as well, because over time you're going to get sick of her. She's going to lose her beauty. You can't use it as a bragging piece or anything else like that. Um, it, it, I'm trying to think of what would be a, ba a base good would just be maybe you're out dating or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, well, it's, 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 hold that thought real quick. So I have it in my notes. Here, it's like boats, cars, homes, like toys. Right. Um, would, would you, and I know that, again, this is going to sound really dehumanizing again, but from a, a strictly pragmatic economic perspective, Oh, do you, would you put like women into that category? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you're not getting an ROI. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a time, a time yeah, cost. It's a, money pit. We know that. <laughs> right, right. No, you're, you're going to come out financially worse off. Now you mm -hmm. can say the same thing about your kids. And obviously you love your, your kids are not a moneymaker. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and I would, and I don't want to sound too inhuman because, you know, ideally you would love your wife or your girlfriend or something like that, but absolutely your wife is not going to like pay a 5% dividend yield, like, you know, the Magellan dividend fund, uh, mm -hmm. investment or anything like that. But yes, it, and it's costly. Not, not only and forget, it's not even oh, like you purchase your wife or you purchase your girlfriend. I break it down in the book. There's maintenance costs, right? But there's mm. also acquisition costs and acquisition costs are huge. You got to go and sift through you know hundreds of gals to find one that might be marriageable. 
-hmm. And then you're like, oh, I got her. All right. Well, now you had your sunk pursuit or re uh, uh, searching cost. cost. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now you have to maintain it just like a boat or a car. You can't not take your wife out. You can't not be nice to your or, or do some nice things here or there for her or your girlfriend. Save up for a vacation, right? Yeah. Vacation, things like that. And yes, are there women out there that make more than men? And it's actually the reverse. Sure. But over time, and I did the numbers on this, I forgot what the average, like dating doesn't stop after you're married. And I, I, I wish I could look up my book, but I'm still blind from those uh, dilated <laughs> shots. Eyes, so yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's like married men still spend net out of women like another sixteen hundred dollars a year on uh, mm -hmm. on dates, and so yes, it from a financial standpoint, uh, wives and girlfriends are a luxury good. Mm -hmm. um, but I would even argue, um, whereas those are those are your big ticket items like boats and houses and racing cars or whatever else uh, mm -hmm. that, that would be your wife and girlfriend. Um, the uh, girls that you date are short-term um, uh, luxury items, like a very high-end sh shot of scotch, or mm. <laughs> um, you're going on a, a, a short boat cruise or something. Uh, it, for in general, the pursuit mm. of women is a luxury good. It's almost it's not almost like gambling. It is gambling, and you better be able to afford the to lose the money uh, uh, to to gamble rather than go into debt to maybe win. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, but all the, the pursuit of women in general is a luxury good. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to say? I, 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 I've already seen this happen. Cause like, as soon as the book drops, like every MGTOW on plan, every black pill, Spurg pill, doom pill, whatever pill you're, whatever they're calling themselves right now, Intel pill, uh, wants to take that data and beat themselves up with it. Like it's just not worth it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. And here it is in, in cold, hard facts. Um, I get that. I, I see that as sort of like the, almost like the extreme opposite of when women will say, well, that's commodifying like sexuality. That's commodifying the human experience. That's commodifying. It's like, well, yeah, I see it from that side. Like you still want a wife. Yeah, like everybody, I think, still wants that like to reproduce. They would like to have a mother of their child. They would like to have a monogamous relationship with their with you know somebody who loves them as much as they do. And and I get that, but these are like number crunching. This is data, right? This is this is something to keep you sort of abreast of, like you know, give you an educated, uh, you know, so you can make an educated decision. Now, the opposite, of course, of that uh, that commodification is the guys who are just like screw it. I'm out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Like, so what do you say to those guys who are just sort of going to use this as a, um, you know, sort of a, a reason for just giving up? I, I don't blame them at all. And the <laughs> reason why is I, I have a very unique position, I guess mm -hmm. in, uh, in these realms, you know, red pill, black pill, whatever else. Mm -hmm. And it, it, this goes, it's a cowardly out, but I'm being intellectually honest. I'm a libertarian. I don't care what you do with your life. Right, um, right. After doing the numbers, not to mention, I dated a ton of gals. I am completely sympathetic if guys say, let's so like, I'm done. I want to out. I don't want to have to deal with this anymore. Some guys have gone through some really tragic stuff. I guess my main criticism with the, the MGTOW community is when you have a 17 year old, yeah, women are bitches, man. It's like, dude, you didn't even have your, your, your little peen touched. Like, how can you be so jaded? And hmm. I made my criticisms before about how they're, they're weak and they're uh, cowards. They, they want to use this as an excuse, but let's not discount that. There's been a lot of guys out there who went through this and they're hmm. like, no, this is not worth it. I'm 56. My wife of 30 years left me. <clears throat> um, my dad lived to 72. So I got, what's the math on that? 16 years left. I'm not wasting my time going on. I want to go do my bucket list or either the mental, uh, uh, you know, if you know, Terrence pop, of course, yeah. I am completely sympathetic. If he never wants to date a girl ever again, I get it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but at the same time, then in, it, it's, it's a choice. And I think chapter 12 or whatever the last chapter is, mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's called strategy because I'm no dummy either. Most men do want to get married. Most men would like to fall in love. And I say, okay, Given these horrifically bad statistics, given this really uphill battle you got going on, what is within your power? What can you do to drastically increase your chances? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the same prescription that we've always known before. Okay, uh, get in good shape. Have make money, going make on. muscles, make, make money. <clears throat> yeah, be six feet tall. If not, go, you know, shame on you. No, and I don't talk about the, the height. Well, but other things, there's compensation that you have to make. I mean, if you have a deficit, yeah. you compensate for it in another area that you're not going to be able to either genetically or, or maybe you just simply don't want to invest in compensating for that particular thing. Right. 
Right. And the the number one thing, according to this, we had a big model put together to, to run all the numbers at one shot. Mm -hmm. The biggest variable that will affect a man's success with women is the number of women he asks out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but back in my day, I mean, I was, there'd be times like in a week, I would have easily asked out 20 girls, you know, mm -hmm. like to be a girl. I mean, I, there would not be an opportunity that I, that I left go by. And <clears throat> certainly the majority said no, but you would get some. And so for those who still, they still are intellectually honest with themselves and they still come to the conclusion that pursuing women is something they want, they're going to do it. Here is this instruction manual in the last chapter on what you can do based on the statistics. You know, by the way, don't write poetry, by the way, don't get flowers, but do go to the gym, do make money. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and above all else, ask the effing girl out. I don't care how awkward you think. So if, if you want to pursue girls, this book has that there for you too. If you don't, and you're being intellectually honest with yourself, I totally understand because there is a huge opportunity cost when you do this. If you're going to pursue, it is a full-time job. And then that's in addition to your full-time job that you're working just to sustain yourself. Right. So especially if they're older guys, you've gone through divorce, you've just had a horrible time. I get it. I understand. But I... There is, and and yes, you're right. There have been. See, I told you, I'm like, yeah, okay, glad you bought the book. Awesome, you know. Right, right. Do you? Okay, let me ask you this, because uh, I know someone's going to ask this. I'll just, I'll just head them off. With the, I'll save them a super chat. Um, do you? Uh, well, other than Nevada, do you think that the United States will legalize prostitution anytime soon? No, I don't think so. No. Why? Why do you think that? Do you do you think it should uh, be legalized? I, it should be legal. It already is legal. Practically it is, but yeah, it, 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 not not practically let's be very clear <laughs> that this is all prostitution. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless the rare instance, the girl is paying and da, 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 da. We're only complaining about the medium of exchange. Prostitution paid for in barter is perfectly legal. Here's your ring. Here's your house. Here's alimony. Here's this, here's a car, da, 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 da. Oh, but the second you pay for cash, you're a John and you can't get laid. Yeah, so, so, the, the moment you go direct, then you're, yeah, then you're bad. The moment you switch to cash, you know, I even wonder like, well, what if you paid in silver? What if you paid in crypto? Would that be, you know, it's, just, it's this <laughs> fake BS veneer. Uh -huh. So uh, anyway, so I, I do not believe it will become legal across the United States uh, simply because I don't think uh, at the end of the day, women will realize what? They can get it for a, really a fraction. You, know, it is much cheaper to rent. The mm -hmm. ROI on on uh, prostitution is much higher than getting married, doing it the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And and, and um, so I think that when we say, "Well, wait," there, I even and it depends on your opportunity cost, like what your wage is. Mm -hmm. So I can't say how much cheaper or more expensive getting a prostitute is than going and getting a date and then wooing her over several dates. But at least a factor of ten to one. At mm. least, yeah, it is. It, it's like ninety percent off if you just go and and go with whatever seeking arrangement, or you fly out to. Uh, oh, I was going to ask you that too, because that's that's actually down here at the bottom of my notes, mm -hmm. which is game versus prostitution. This guy was asking about it, but like, uh, there we have like so many different ways right now to sort of get past the the sexual side of things, like the this it, like again, pornography. I think is really more or less sedation right now, but I it's in in a sense, it's a form of, of prostitution in that it is taking care of that glandular issue that all men have right i mean it's, if you just like boil it down to to what it really is it's just that's what it comes down to but when you look at like uh escorts right well that's just a fancy way of saying you got it you got a hooker right right um uh, like uh then there's the direct the direct route i guess you could go down to the bra heck you can come out here and 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 go to one of the brothels and, and uh do it that way then uh there's also sugaring i wanted to ask you about like what you mean what, do you think that sugaring is sort of a sign of the times right now like guys are just thinking well i'm going to be paying this money anyways maybe they crunch the numbers like you in a sense maybe they're just simply pr pragmatism and very prag practical should we then say that that should we look down on guys who are like paying for like you know young chippies to to spend time with them no no and that's i and, and maybe legal is not what we should be discussing mm -hmm. <clears throat> socially accepted i think i do yeah. not believe the word prostitution or something clear cut as prostitution is going to be made legal behind the scenes it effectively already is whether it's through traditional norms or a sugar daddy site or an escort who then decides to like her client um, so 
I, I do not believe, uh, if, so for effective purposes, it's, it's more or less legal. They're not going to outright say it because what kind of a culture would we be? But right. what I think scares women the most is that if it became socially accepted, because mm -hmm. then it is, it is that much cheaper and it is. And no, I, I do not find any shame. I'll, I'll give you an example why the, the reason I had this epiphany about uh, prostitution or ladies of the evenings, because I think prostitution is too harsh a term. Mm. Um, <clears throat> There was this guy, he came into a restaurant. He was ugly, Rolo. He was he was really not a good looking man. He was tall, he was in shape, but one of those rare, ugly people. And I looked at him and he was about 55, 60 and he had this gorgeous blonde, mm -hmm. like maybe 27, 28 on his arm. And uh, I'm looking, you know, I was just looking and <clears throat> we went out the same time they did finished up dinner. Mm -hmm. And they get, he get, goes into this brand spanking new, boxy looking uh mercedes mm -hmm. it, it was some had to look it up it had all the pimp stuff it, it was just the you could tell this was more expensive than my house and ride. it was uh, it was it was a quarter million dollar suv oh wow and i started doing some math and uh the girl i was with she's just like oh, you think that's a prostitute i'm like yes yes it is i don't think i know <laughs> yes no. well why would he do that look he's got that that, that, that. and i started to think i'm like He's probably a surgeon mm. who gets paid a thousand dollars an hour. Now here he is 50, 55, but let's forget what, what your age, if you make a thousand dollars an hour, all right, to get laid under, and we're talking late now fall in love. We're just simply talking competitive, yeah. good the mm -hmm. competitive alternative to prostitution. Mm -hmm. He has to spend at least 10 hours. I imagine to get laid by traditional means. You got to go out, you got to date, you got to swipe. And that's on the low end, 10 hours. <clears throat> then you got to go out with three girls. One's going to flake another. You're never going to see again. And the third one might go in. And let's say after the third date. So we're talking definitely more than 10 hours, but to keep the math simple, 10 hours prorated at a thousand dollars. That's a $10,000 opportunity cost. Hey, let's call it 6,000 with taxes, $6,000, not to mention he wasted his time to get laid once, which in all statistical likelihood is not going to end up anywhere. So if he just wants to get his rocks off, it absolutely pays mm -hmm. for the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. If we want to be inhuman about it, we're talking about commodity then mm -hmm. for a, he could pay her a thousand bucks for four hours, be done and over with it. And he now had, he can make more money. He could play video games. He could do whatever. So, you know, when you're younger, and you're making $10 an hour. Well, okay, you have time is your surplus, so it's cheaper for you to go in game. But I have mm -hmm. abs because you're, I have no problems with prostitution at all, morally, ethically, or anything. One, because we're already doing it, right? And two, it, it's the economist to me. It's just so much more damn efficient and cheaper. And sadly, mm -hmm. and I hate to say this, usually you're going to get a better product, not because of the sex or she's hot. But the guys I've seen in Vegas motivated, yes. <laughs> but guess guess what the unsurprising the surprising fringe benefit is. I I uh, I go to a cigar lounge out in Vegas, mm -hmm. and several of my friends also show up with really good looking girls. And I finally realized I put two and two together because <laughs> I would ask them like, "Oh, where'd you guys meet? Oh, that's nice. What do you do?" Da, 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 and I get kicked under the table. I'm like, "Oh, all right. They're nice to these guys." They're Pers nice. Yeah. Yep. They show up. They're conversational. They're not I loud. Or kidding, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm like, sorry. And I could, I could say this with uh, uh, supreme confidence. Again, I don't care what people's feelings are. Sadly, right now, the girl on sugar, sugar, debt, sugar seeking arrangement. I'm sorry. Any sugar sites mm -hmm. or your, your All pro, out, <laughs> you know, uh, your pro out in um, Vegas or wherever is going to be a better bet and a better product, quote unquote, I, not to sound degrading mm -hmm. than someone you have to go out and, and beat around the bush with to finally get to. So no, mm -hmm. I have I, absolutely not. And I think as time goes on, men are certainly not going to care anymore, especially now you see it on the internet, but there will, the, the stop will come where, uh, women, I'd say particularly feminists are going to say, wait a minute, Men are paying and they're getting away and there's no marriage anymore and they're not legally hooking up and we can't get pray. Oh, wait, hey, hold mm -hmm. on. So I, I'd be curious to see what happens in the next 10 years. But right now, I think they're so full of the. Do you think you know, that's why women. there's such a push right now? I think in, I guess, in popularizing, westernizing culture right now to 
classify these people as sex workers as opposed to like, oh, you're a hooker, you're a prostitute, you're a whore. I, yeah, and and I'm not necessarily against that. <laughs> well, hang on, let's let's be I mean, fair. To the- Sterling Cooper is a sex worker, but yeah, but. Let, and we can use him as an example, but let's use ourselves as an example. Like, you know, this doesn't take nothing. We got to set up this thing. We oh, got to yeah. set up our LLCs. There's a lot of work. Mm. Sterling Cooper talks about they're setting up the shots. You know, you think it's just come mm. in and people have sex. No, there's a schedule. We're going to do this angle, do that, take it again and all that. These gals who are on <clears throat> uh, Facebook or not fa- uh, fans only. Only fans. Uh, only fans. <laughs> Whatever, any one of these places, family fans, only fans, yeah. (laughs) Whatever, they're they're on their their sugar site. Mm -hmm. They got to put up time and effort in. They got to get a camera. They got to do it. Now, some obviously mail it in, but then Mm -hmm. the gals on seeking arrangement, I'm sure they have to put up a a right profile. They have to go. There there is actual work involved in it. And then even gals who are escorts, that's time. And and it's work. If they're not doing what they want to do, like I'm Mm -hmm. sure if they weren't paid, they'd rather stay at home. And watch a show, but mm-hmm. they are getting paid for their time. That's work. So there is work involved. So I have no problems taking some that's pejorative, like prostitute or hooker and calling them sex workers, uh, mm-hmm. simply because I do believe it's real work, but I I'm kind of okay if they remove that shame because frankly, they all work. They're doing it anyway. <laughs> yes. You anyway. might as well have a new tie, a new job title, I guess. Yes. I also want to ask this is, is, and, and this kind of gets into the domestic side of things. I got uh, the, in the center of my my list here is i i know that there's a push right now I don't, i've been meaning to ask you this for a while i know there's a push right now and maybe maybe it's maybe i'm overblowing things but i'm just going to say this anyways there's a push right now for women to want to be like compensated for child care and for taking care of domestic duties and washing dishes and doing like all the things that we would have had said a traditional wife would do like from the 1950s through let's say the 90s or something like that and now it's like now it should be paid work it should be uh it should be something that's sort of an hourly kind of thing it should be reflected on their taxes or something like that what what do you what would you say to women who want to make uh once they get married once they get into sort of that into their their ladies of leisure right they become um, you know, domestic bliss. You hear, congratulations, ladies. You have it all. Um, do you think they should be compensated for um, for domestic chores? No, absolutely not. No. Okay. Now, why why is that? Because that's their choice. If you want to stay at home, like what? Do I get paid to do my chores? It's, <laughs> this is ludicrous. And uh-huh. here's the other thing, I, I, lady, ladies. Uh, for those of you who think you're entitled to money because you had a kid, I'm not the one that effed you. All right, that's not my kid. That's your choice. And you're all about being treated equal and having responsibility. Well, being treated equal anyway. All right. <clears throat> but mm. no, you had the kid. Someone's got to do the dishes. I mean, that's insane. Like, what's next? Do we have to have someone? You, oh, we're gonna, am I going to pay you to make your bed? Am I going to pay you to wipe your ass? Uh, am I going to pay you to feed your children? I already do. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, and it's a mood academic discussion. It's, it's just more parasitism. It's just they don't want to support themselves and they want free money. That's it. And they don't want any responsibility. Uh, mm. I mean, if the husband paid for it, fine. Okay. That's that. But, but this delusion, it's like, what guys don't do dishes. Guys don't have to clean. You know, it, how childish of a, of a culture do we want when you're, when you're paid to floss your teeth? Uh, it's, I don't know where it would end. Yeah. I, I think one of the reasons it's getting out there is because it's, they're using the same logic that we would say, well, my sunk cost in pursuing a woman is I got to pay for dinner. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do all these things to sort of get into to get into her good graces enough so that I can get her to spread her legs. And therefore, we can take it from there and hopefully form a family later on down the road. Um, I, I think that it's kind of using that same kind of math like, well, you know, if he if, if we're going to have uh, if we're going to break everything down into commo- we're going to commodify everything like the niceties of me being a wife or you being a husband or whatever it is, if we're going to commodify that, then shouldn't we be compensated for doing the dishes, which I think we- I agree with you, but I think it's sort of ludicrous. to. to I think it's just sort of something to to make them feel special, you know, like, oh, well, you know, uh, housewives are just as as commercially viable as anybody else. But um, I, I just wanted to know what you thought about like that, that logic anyway. Well, let's re- even remove kids from it. We're paying adults to do chores. Mm-hmm. All right. So one, all right, women are doing, okay. They'll whine about doing dishes or whatever. Okay. Well then are you going to, what's the going rate for a man to change the oil? All right. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. by the way, what's the going rate that at any moment in time, he's got to pick up the gun and go hunt down the burglar 
or mm-hmm. the assaulter or something like that. Yeah. 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 This, the, mm-hmm. the dishes have to be done once every two or three days, but fending off an attacker, that may never happen, but you still got to put me on the line for that. So when it does happen, I'd be better paid pretty highly for that. Um, what about, you know, yard work, uh, carpentry, maintenance? It's, it's the tiring old argument that men just lie around and eat sausage all day. Give me, a beer. Do, yeah, give me a beer. Like they didn't go out. And then and I've, I've made my girlfriend change the oil and spark plugs. Just mm-hmm. like, okay, there you go. All right. You know, yep. But it's a childish argument. And then here's the other thing. I don't know. I don't see where a child having a family, like a husband, wife, and the wife is paid to do chores. Uh, I don't see where a child comes into play here. So why would we limit this to married couples? Why not bachelors? Like, hey, I brushed my own teeth today. Hey, I I, uh, changed the filter in the car. Hey, I did dishes today. What's the government going to pay me? Uh, it's it's just, now of course it's hypocritical and they'll go and hide behind because I'm a mother and stay at home and and, and forget responsibility and you guys chose to have the kid forget that it's it's just a boring another blanket grab for grabbing money that's all it is with with a, a really specious if that's the word or flimsy excuse or yeah. rationale yeah yeah exactly I want to throw some numbers at you real quick because I this these are some that I quoted in my own book actually when I have I have a, a pretty dense chapter on marriage wait 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 you have a dense I chapter a dense a chapter hey well because yeah. of all your light fluffy writing that i yeah it's this is like it, it's tied up in a nice tight package uh anyways the uh, so here's here's some numbers for you uh i got these from marketingzeus.com which is uh i guess they track stats like this uh uh what women buy purchases by women account for 91 percent of new homes 66 percent of new personal computers <laughs> which is kind of strange uh 92 percent of vacations uh 89 percent of bank accounts where are you going to do your banking so this these are women who are in families or are on who account for making those decisions okay. um and then 90- roll real quick is this the study where it was um they make it or influence it was it was that the study it, well, it's it's uh, it's spending power. It's um, okay. there's a and I, another thing I quote in the book is there's a uh, a new well gosh it's not really new it was back in 2018 or 2019 and it was Morgan Stanley and you can still find it right now it was a um it was an article and now I think it's even a blog called the rise of the she economy. Mm-hmm. The reason I looked at it was because I was looking at the forecasts let's say of women who are going to be single. Uh, by 2030 or in 2030 and beyond because there's such a there was such a marked rise in uh, w- single women who will never be who will never be married who will never have children or will have children but they will do it on their own they will they will have the the babies through you know freezing eggs and and sperm banks and stuff like that um, but I so I looked at it from the perspective of not from an economic perspective but I looked at it from like sort of like what's this doing to us socially and society society wide and um according to Morgan Stanley um and then also Forbes I think as well um they are forecasting that by 2030 uh something like 52% of women between the ages of 25 and 44 which is supposed to be the you know the working ages the prime working demographic for women will be single and uh childless by uh, uh, 52%. So over just over half of women in in the United States will be single and childless at that point. And of course what they're saying is well how of course they praise it as this great, you know, triumph of feminism and and gynocentrism and oh boy isn't this going to be great girls you're never going to need a man ever again you won't have to worry about this you'll you'll have everything you've ever wanted, right? You don't need guys, you don't need to be married, you, you whatever you, you pushing them you go, go girl <laughs> and and so in in some ways like I'm looking at it from kind of like this sort of pessimistic kind of look, you know, like oh my god, you know, like how does this affect us as a society as a social order what does this do to fertility rates what does this do like i'm sure you've seen idiocracy right the only people yeah, who have yeah, babies yeah. And, and ignoring the the educated you know numbers are the people who just are like screw it i'm just gonna go and have as many kids as i possibly can kind of thing mm-hmm. but um so i was looking at it from that perspective and i thought it was interesting because it kind of a, it kind of locks in with what you're talking about because morgan stanley wouldn't care about this if they couldn't make some money off of it, right. <laughs> if they weren't already planning to like invest in, I don't know, boxed wine and, you know, 
cat toys or whatever it is, you know, that's oh, and, and egg freezing technology. Freezing and chemical, technology. Oh, yeah, that's that are coming that that will be, uh, I would say, certainly be available by then. But I want to get you to chime in on like, what do you think, like from a, a social standpoint, from a societal standpoint, um, is this sustainable? I mean, is it sustainable for guys to say, you know, screw it, I'm going to be a MGTOW and she's going to say, screw it, I'm going to be a feminist. And you never, never the twain shall meet to ever have children. Like, again, it's that idiocracy. Uh, yeah. We would laugh at it, but we laugh at it because it's true. Right. No, it's it's not sustainable because, if well, one, if you don't have kids, then the human race ends. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, yeah, if you're talking, uh, forget MGTOW or girls uh, going their own way or whatever. Uh, if dumb people are breeding and statistically speaking, you will have dumb children. And it's not even that it's like they're going to be raised under poor conditions and they're not going to, you know, you're not going to have your next Elon Musk or your Jeff Bezos. <clears throat> uh, your economic productivity is going to collapse. And then, I mean, the human race will never go extinct. People will still have sex, but you're going to have lower economic growth. You're not going to have the technological innovation. You're going to have increased welfare dependency to the point that there'll be more, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? Certainly parasites, but there'll be, uh, higher resource demands and what the economy is even capable of producing. You'll have starvation, then we'll have the hard times. And from the hard times will come the good men. And then maybe, you know, right. 50, hundred years from now, we'll, we'll have learned our lesson. Um, but yeah, it, this is, this is not going to, it will cause a collapse of some kind. It won't eliminate the human race, but it will definitely cause uh, an economic collapse because you don't have men and women who love each other, and more importantly, men and women who love each other enough and love their children enough to stay together and provide their kids with a stable up, up, uh, upbringing and home. What we got now are one sex that's completely propagandized to think they're a victim of the other. And the second mm -hmm. sex that is slowly and maybe not so slowly getting hip to that fact and waking up to that fact. And people are making their corresponding decisions. So I don't have kids. Uh, I can truly take and enjoy the decline and clap. I'm just like, yes, yes. Let it burn. Let it burn. more <laughs> scotch. Yes. Just there's only two things I ask you keep the electricity on and you millennials work really hard to pay your social security taxes. Cause I, I'm going to have really expensive scotch when I'm old. <laughs> I, that's, that's uh, another part of this. You know, I, I know you saw this. So this is okay. Now we're going to just going to, Put, the, put everything on hold real quick because I know you saw this uh, story this morning because you chimed in on the tweet that I did. Did you see the story about the uh, – in Sweden – the rise in uh, guys Thai going brides. Thai, yeah, Thai brides and and like their mail order Thai brides and they're bringing them into Sweden. Now, of course, what I said is this: like, is that this is like another? I I, I expect like Joker from Better Bachelor will jump. Why, why don't you <laughs> like Joker? Already, Joker's right? a great guy. I like and Joker. Every one of these guys who's like sort of this red meat MGTOW guy is going to just jump all over that because of what right. the, it's the same thing. It's like remember when COVID went big? It was like oh, finally women are going to pay attention and appreciate guys more because they need us now and it's like no they don't, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> and uh so i was looking at this i and i was and of course what are they going to say what what do you think what do you think that like the sort of the mig town mindset is going to say about this story it's going to be well if they had been nice and if they hadn't been just sort of these uppity cunts you know that that you know we have a feminist government and then of course they go they're going to make the immigration uh the, the image immigration claim because sweden has taken more immigrants from all over the world than any mm -hmm. as far as i know any any european country relative might, to their population relative yes. to their population and so when guys do it I, I think it's funny because we had this when when a feminist government invites immigrants into their country then it's sort of this oh well we the people of sweden all agree on this and we'll bring them in but when guys import Thai wives, then it's like misogyny and it's, it's endemic. Slave trade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's human trafficking at that point. And I think it's interesting to see the narrative sort of shift there. But I was, so I was going to ask you, this is like, uh, so they're going to see it as sort of this quid quid pro quo, but do you think that that situation where God, and, and I've heard it's, I'm using Sweden cause it's just the most recent thing, but look, guys will do this all the time. They'll say, well, just go get a, go get a feminine wife. Go get a uh, go get at some poor girl from the Philippines or Southeast Asia or whatever, and uh, bring her back here, and she'll she will appreciate you, right? We were just saying that one of the reasons why guys like the sugar sugaring is is because of that. Now, is, yeah, you get treated oh, better. Is, yeah. so let me ask you this: I didn't even think of this till right now. Do you think 
that guys going and saying, let's go get a foreign bride. Let's go get a, a you know, mail order, quote unquote mail order. No, nobody does mail order, but like, let's just say they go over to, I don't know, Thailand or wherever they Guam, who knows. And they go and they bring the girl back here. Is that, would you say that that's sort of a form of sugaring for, it's like poor man sugaring? <laughs> like going I, would, I would say poor. Cause I've known a couple of guys <laughs> who have done it and then they get divorced just the same. It's very expensive. Um, right. But no, I, 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 it's, uh, it, it's sugaring, but for a wife, mm -hmm. uh, because if you want to just get a sugar baby, I'm well, okay. You can do that here in the United States. You don't have to fly. So, and the, I can't imagine the visa process is very easy or anything like that. And I have a guy, he, he had, he had to have young hot Russians and they mm -hmm. all took him to the cleaners, but this guy was shelling out money and sending money back home overseas. So I, it's certainly not cheap, uh, but I, I could see where they're like, well, forget this. I'm not dating this short haircut, loud, painful. You know, I understand the uh, the logic or even the temptation to go to a, a traditional Asian culture and find it. Uh, but in terms of the response, <clears throat> yeah, of course, they're going to celebrate. I mean, especially if, if you're a committed MGTOW and, and you you're just you're you're you like to see this happen because you were proven right. It's the ultimate, mm -hmm. one of the best things in the world is you get to say, I told you so. And I think another thing that uh, it's not just big towels or anybody else like that, you get to see the hypocrisy where it's like, whoa, whoa, wait, it's all good for you, but not for thee. You're like, why, why the mm -hmm. double standard and the double treatment? And I, I so I, I don't have a, a rat in the race or anything like that, but uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's like, oh, they they went overseas, huh? They got foreign competition. Okay, good, good. Foreign competition, yeah. I was gonna say foreign competition. That's what it comes out, yeah. And that's another thing. Like when I was talking about, like, do you think that you know prostitution will be uh, in its most direct form? Let's just say, will ever be be illegal or sugar? Should sugaring be legal? Um, where where I was at it when I was in Miami, one of the first things I saw was this this couple, and I even I even posted it out there on uh, on Twitter. I just I, I feel so bad about it now too, but. I, I took a, a, a quick shot of these two and I, I pulled this thing that we used to do in the old PUA communities, which is, are they fucking right? Are they, are, are they banging? Right. And I throw it on there and it's like, it j instantly jumps up to like 300, you know, responses and God knows how many likes and whatever else. And of course people don't, it, we're so far removed from those old sort of PUA practices. Like would you open is now a joke, but that used to be a practice that we used to do um, or else it was, um, it was, uh, it was, are they, are they banging? Right. So that was the thing. And of course, everybody instantly sees, well, either they are, or she's paid. And it's like, yeah, well, clearly she was paid. And, and even, uh, Myron pointed it out. He says, that's the sugar date right over there. And, and it was cause the guy was certainly would in, in any other circumstance would never be able to hold that woman's attention for as long as he did, you know, sitting there is who are they banging? I don't know, but is that now should that should that now be socially acceptable was was what I wanted to throw out there. And then again, you can take that and then you can sort of say, well, should going to Southeast Asia now be yeah, no, it, 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 that okay. it did before? It, again, I, I get I get to pull the libertarian card. Everything there should be socially acceptable. Or mm -hmm. should we're talking should a land it's not my business what two adults do uh, sugar daddy or not it's not my business if a mm -hmm. guy follows the rules and he meets a girl on the internet and she wants to come over why well, I, I don't care mm -hmm. uh and and there should be no laws against that uh but at the same time i you know people can have whatever response they want to because you have a right to your opinion women can go oh she couldn't get laid of the united oh that's shameful uh where i would draw a you line is a real start, girl like you're that. gonna get a real 350 mm -hmm. pound loudmouth american woman yeah uh, <laughs> um where i even where i might draw the line is like wait a minute wait a minute where you start to criminalize it uh, or shame mm -hmm. it calling it sex trafficking or something like that mm -hmm. or where you come on uh, you you bring immigrants under the guise oh we need them because uh, certain people the uh, domestic population won't do the job or we need more money for it's like wait a minute no no you bring them in it's like don't don't lie about it i, I mean you could say whatever you want uh, well, i think not defamatory or libel uh, mm -hmm. but i have no moral problems what people do uh, if, if you got to go overseas to find mm -hmm. love go overseas to find love if you want to pay not to find love but just to get your rocks off by all means and neither the the guy or the gal should be shamed at all so yeah i do believe that because that it, it's and i'm so jaded and dark it's been that way the entire time for a while it's just now. whether what do you <laughs> want to put on the veneer like oh yeah well i mean what's the one of the first thing i got it i got it in this book you know what one of the first things women look for on a dating profile 
Height. For, well, height. Yeah. What's what's up there as well? They ask they ask you this like mm-hmm. back in the day when you went on a date. What's the or you just meet someone? What's one of the first what questions? Do you do? What, yeah, do what do you do? do? Mm-hmm. It's money. Now, in some regards, yes, it's to I want a good supporting stable man who could provide mm-hmm. for me and a family. Is it a deadbeat? I get that, but better have six figures. Okay, it is about the money, isn't it? I mean, it is transactional. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, but right. we'll we'll. Like through a Cayman offshore bank account, I'll send the money to the steak and chops place and buy you martinis and then get you an Uber back to your your place or fly you out here. That's okay. The second you give her cash, oh, that's bad. So no, it's it's been happening anyway. It's it's in front of us all the time. It's been that way forever. I just all I ask is that the population, the public, be mature about it and call it what it is. Yeah, that's good. That's a good uh, description of it. I also um. Like I've done several essays on the transactional versus validational nature of like sex yes. and relationships and, and stuff as well. And I think that being, you know, things being with the Pareto principle, right? Top 20% of guys are the guys that, that women want to have sex with, want to get with, want to fall in love with, want to have that sort of fair, the well, way they want to lock down, let's just say. Mm-hmm. And then there's the 80% of guys who are either at, like locked out of the sexual marketplace, which a lot more and more of them are, or it's the guys who are, maybe they're not quite at the, the 20%, but they're just below that 20th percentile and they got to figure things out. And they got to, they got to find, I, I got to, I'm not going to, I'm going to find out how to, how to do this. I'm going to make a, a you know, I'm going to make a new applica- application. I'm going to make some more money. I'm going to have, I'm going to get creative and get innovative as a result of me wanting to solve my, my reproductive problem. And I think another thing that's kind of happening right now is that a lot of guys are just basically either they're just giving up or they don't see the value in, 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 like you said, pursuing women, right? What they don't see the the ROI on pursuing women. And so we kind of, I think one of the things that we do in the manosphere is we say, well, you know, focus on your mission. I'm the first one who will say that, you know, uh, a woman should only ever be a compliment to a man's life. It should never be the focus of a man's life. The problem is, is like for, you get these guys who want to go monk mode or you get these guys who want to in some way turn off their sexuality because they think that in doing so, it will motivate them to, I don't know, cure cancer or, you know, become Nikolai Tesla and create some, you know, I don't know, the Tesla coil or learn, you know, learn how to do anti-gravity or become the next Elon Musk because all of that stuff, they don't have to think about sex anymore. So now they can take all of that energy and apply it somewhere else. And it's been my my observation is that 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 sexual angst, that uh, that motivation to want to do an end run or like to make up for those deficits to, to want to get with the hot girl is, is that's what's motivating sort of innovation for these guys. And we're, we're, we seem to be kind of removing that right now as a result, because everything they see now is transactional. And maybe that's a result of, we have the internet. Now we have this new data sets. We have like you and I, when we're out there giving our version of sort of red pill awareness, guys go, why, why not be sedated? Why not just sit in my room and just jerk off all the time and order pizza and or Uber Eats or what? Why not have everything delivered to my house? You know, right. if it's that convenient, if I can make money online and it's that convenient, why should I even walk outside? <laughs> Who cares about COVID? I just stay in my house all the time, you know, right. and they just deliver me shit. So right. I just, well, do you think that in, in the end, like, do you think like as far as like the sexual marketplace that is affecting the economic marketplace, do you think that that oh. is going to like sort of set us back? Like we keep talking about how we're going to go into the, like enjoy the decline. Do you think that the decline is it, such as it is? Do you think that it is being accelerated because guys just yeah. they say, fuck it, I'm out? Right. Yeah. And and I've already seen this male part, uh, labor force participation rate has been going down. Yeah. Um, marriage has been going down. And you well, see this. You all the numbers for guys right now, enrollment and and assuming they're even getting into it. I don't, I'm wondering, is it because they see, they, they read your book, right? They read like, uh, wait, what is it useful? What, I hope. It useless? What's the worthless? What's the, oh, worthless. Like they see worthless and they go, they go. Why, why would I bother with that? Why not just learn to code online? Why not just do these things? And, and do you think that that is like stifling innovation? Is it stifling the next Elon Musk? I don't even want to say Elon Musk. The next guy, great inventor who had to invent because he wanted a hot chick to, or he wants, he wants the hot chick. He wants the piece of ass. 
there's there's an argument that like uh <clears throat> yeah that's there's a logic to that like i'll show her and then in a 1980s ski movie he'll do the triple lindy and win the girl over from the cool guys mm -hmm. um and then there's a counterpoint well look at tesla or edison i guess they didn't have girls in their lives or something like that mm -hmm. i i don't care about these rare and few individuals who create amazing technologies albeit I look at the general population because that's where the vast majority of your economic production is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And when you look at marriage going down, as well as male labor force participation, but especially right. marriage, that is, marriage that is, that, is by the way, marriage is at its lowest rate since they started the since they the started recording. recording. It's at six and a half percent. Another thing I put in my book. Also, by the way, for anybody, just let me hold that thought. I'm by here. The way, anybody who's going to criticize me about like, oh, divorces, you know, it's divorces leveled off. There's not as much divorce as there was. Yeah, because no one's getting married. That's why you dumb ass. So anyway, sorry, Brad. Over. Well, and, and I'm sure this is also in your book where you look at cohabitation yeah. rates as well. So, but men are just not getting married. And the problem mm -hmm. is when you look at who produces more economic production, married men by a long shot, it's yeah. like a, it's like a 70% premium, not double. They don't double it, but the, a 70%, uh, a married man will earn. I cannot emphasize that enough. He will earn 70% more than everyone else. And everybody else, mm -hmm. single males, single women, and married women all roughly make the exact same uh, if you look at over the course mm -hmm. of life. It's the married men that just outpace everyone by a very wide margin. <clears throat> and the reason I say they earn it is because they didn't get their buddy-buddy club. It is no, there's no wage gap. Get off your ass. So anyway, these guys have a wife. Mm -hmm. and they have, probably have kids. Now, they have a vested interest in the future in society, and so they're, they have every incentive in the world to work more. If they have, For any other reason than their kids. Mm -hmm. But if men are not getting married because it's too risky, they don't want to, the entry fee is too high, or they're just, you know, or, and, and here's where all the different options are, where it's like another uh, variable or statistic people don't talk about is just what few men of even 35 and younger are even financially capable of getting married now. I mean, these guys are still in debt, living at home, things like that. So for a potpourri of reasons, men are not getting married and they're checking out. And that delivers a crippling blow to the uh, economic growth of the country. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, absolutely. That that has huge economic effect. And it's kind of the one of the main economic premise of my book is like, hey, if there ain't hot chicks for men to get excited about and go get laid and fall in love with, uh, you can expect economic growth to tank. And I don't care what stimulus package you print off or how much you make money, print or go burr. Mark mm -hmm. here, mark my words. It was said on Rolo Tomasi's show. If you want the economy to really jumpstart, start making women thin, attractive, and nice again. And you mm -hmm. will see every guy out there all of a sudden discover, well, maybe I should go get an engineering degree. Maybe I better earn something like that. You'll always have your eccentrics like Elon Musk or uh, Tesla or whoever, or Newton mm -hmm. or uh, all these different guys. But you want the economy to boom? Well, since men account for, I would say, 75% of stated uh, GDP, uh, I would push it more towards 85% real GDP not adjusted for inflation, but things that I'm not like you're paid as a social worker. That's not GDP. Get out of here. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you would fire up those engines again, no different than if you went from 43 octane gas that we're currently fe feeding your snowmobile. And we went up to 105 uh, octane gas to give you racing. Wow. The engine's working better. Mm. Did you know that if we didn't yell at men and treat them like shit and blame them for all the problems in the world and pass laws to not, uh, to, to discriminate against them and, and not say we didn't, you do know if we treated men nice and we're thin and kind, they might wake up in the morning and go do some stuff. I just, you know, yeah, but it would be more of an economic boom than than printing money or any kind of stimulus plan that could ever come out of Washington. Yep, yep. Uh, let me throw this up real quick again. This is the book of numbers. This is Aaron Clary's latest work. It is the analyzing the ROI of the pursuit of women. Who did that cover? That's just a, kind of a for that. Oh, yes, that's cover? my spicy cover. I, you know, it's funny. I, a lot of people don't realize I've done covers for a lot of a lot of different authors. I did uh, uh, Hotep Jesus's uh, Laws of Masculinity, the Unbreakable Laws of Masculinity. I did that one as well too. Uh, yeah, so get me to do your cover. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I have a vested interest in the success of this book as well. Um, so, anyways, uh, let me get let me get to a few of these. I wanted to to make sure. Oh, and then of course, uh, the Rational Male Religion is now available also on Amazon. So go ahead and pick those two up, and uh, that's our two latest offerings there. 
There's our shameless plug for this one. For, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Maybe you do. Uh, do the values of wives in Western countries require straight line, double declining, <laughs> M-A-R-C-R-S depreciation Matters. if applying <laughs> accounting concepts to wives? What is that? Uh, and, and, and he's, he's being clever. That's a, uh, uh, there's depreciation methods. So when you buy an asset, how quickly do you write it off? Like uh, uh, a, a tractor would be like, right off that? <laughs> well, no, you can't write them off. But like it, the question, the point he's trying to insinuate there is certain assets depreciate quicker than others. So like um, uh, a Ferrari would depreciate very quickly because it's no longer the latest model the next year. And you took it off the lot and things like that. So you do a double digit uh, mm -hmm. straight line is you just take a percentage each year. So if you had a tractor life expectancy is 15 years, you take one fifteenth expense it. Uh, over the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. I forgot what makers is. I believe makers is a formula or maybe he's referring to the FASB rules where they categorize different asset types. Like a computer is three, a car is five and a building is 30. Mm -hmm. uh, but for, it, it depends on the woman. It really does. If you get the right gal, she'll never depreciate. I'm, be, I'm not mm -hmm. to sound all sappy. I mean, I got a little, there's like one little heart cell left that they didn't replace with metal for my pump. Um, <laughs> you know, if you get the right, yeah, she won't depreciate. But women in general, oh, like you don't even depreciate, you expense. It's mm -hmm. all depreciated in that first year. It's just gone. It's, you know, it's, it's, I, I love it when guys use the analogy of like women are like cars, right? You you marry her, you drive it off the lot, and, but it depreciates like 30% because you just drove it off the lot kind of thing because right. now, you, now you have the car. And then and so, of course, you know, then they say, well, it's just a depreciating asset, yada, yada, yada. I mean, we, we've been like bef long before you or I came around. I mean, smarter guys than us were, were figuring this shit out. But then you also, every once in a while, you happen upon a car that ends up becoming a classic car. Yes. Right? Like a muscle and car, right? American class, like a, a 57 Chevy, right? What are, there, every once in a while, there's a car that comes along where people go, you know, later on, later on down the road, 20, you know, it only takes 20 years for a car to become a classic. Yeah. I yeah. have a classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't you can, look like you can, the, you can get the license plate. This is a classic car. It's like, what is that? That's like 97 Toyota 4Runner. That's not a classic <laughs> car. But yeah. Every once in a while, you get those. Uh, Laughing Lark said this. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't get to your uh, your super. He says, uh, they are comp women. They are compensated for being home. They are house. They're housed, fed, utilities, a car, clothes, vaccination, vaccination or vacations, I guess. Uh, uh, when the kids are in school, she has free time. What the hell is the, what are they complaining about? Uh beats office work and stress <laughs> well i think really what they're saying is that there it's again it's like what is if time is money right we were just saying this a second ago like if the guy is, is sugaring or whatever and the guy is spending time with his sugar date or whatever how like, if he's there for two hours how much money could he be making in that like it's some cost right how, how much money could he be making in the two or three hours that he's spending there kind of just chit-chatting with some girl that maybe he gets laid with and maybe he doesn't um, you, again, you can apply the same kind of mechanics, I think, to uh, well, the women would like to think that they can apply the same kind of mechanics to that. And I think what it comes down to is that, uh, again, the things that make that make a woman attractive to a guy. And I mean that in sort of in terms of like arousal and attraction, obviously, men want a guy or want a, a woman who is uh, younger, hotter, tighter. They're looking for a woman who's about 23 years old, according to uh, Dataclism, according to OkCupid. Okay and, you know, this is like, that's the, at that age is when most men at every other age find women attractive. So there's that aspect of it too. But just like you were saying a minute ago, is like, how appreciative is she? How nice is she? How respectful is she? How, um, I, I think appreciative, I, I wish I had some other, like, adverb or ad adjective to like caring selfless feminine yes uh like is interested in the relationship is interested in you has a, a vested um you know actually I, I think a lot of guys pay for the act or pay for the feigning of genuine desire mm -hmm. and so I, I and again something i've been writing about really since the good old days um is that when you find like a successful stripper the successful ones, the ones who are the highest paid, yes, they're very good looking, but the, the best part about them, the reason why they get paid as much as they do is because as soon as you walk in the door, it's like she's known you her whole life. How you doing, honey? How was your day at work, honey? 
how, you know, uh, oh, hey, come on in. Let me sit on your lap and see how things are going. What's going on at the plant, right? right. <laughs> What's going on at the office? I don't know. But it's like, it's that familiarity and it's, it's, it's feigned concern, but it's belie- like the ones who can pull it off, the, the women who make the most money as a stripper is, yeah, they got to be sexual. They got to give you a good lap dance. But it's also that that's why OnlyFans is what it is. I said, I told this to the guys on, on Myron's show the other day is it's not so much the sex part. You can go get laid. You can go get off. You can come here and I'll take you to Dayton and we can, or to a uh, mound house and we can go to the bunny ranch or the Mustang ranch and I'll get you laid. You want, oh, how do I solve my, my, I do I do it, Rolo? how do I do it? You come right here and I'll give me 500 bucks. I'll take a hundred of that as a finder. <laughs> yeah, drive your happy ass up to, to Mustang ranch and we'll solve that problem for you. It's not that difficult, but what is difficult is getting a woman who actually appreciates you, who has that, who it even fakes it and makes it believable enough. And I think what, what, where I get into trouble, I think when, when I talk about this is when I talk about validational sex versus trans transactional sex a lot of guys and probably yourself too would say well all all sex eventually becomes transactional it might on a certain level yeah it might start as like you know sort of this visceral genuine desire this lust but after a while it becomes not just about the alpha fuck side of hypergamy it becomes about the beta buck side of hypergamy because as women age they depreciate of course in in value from the respect of she's not younger hotter tighter anymore and so as a result, what is the value added to, to women? So my next question for you is, and I'm going to ask you this because I asked every single girl that I talked to on Myron's show, I said, like they were asking, you know, if, if you lost your pussy, how would you keep your man? Right. That's the Patrice O'Neill, uh, you know, <laughs> bit. Right. But so, so I told them this, I said, what is it? What value do you bring to the table beyond just your sexuality? Because today women commodify their sexuality. That's all there is. It's like, that's the only thing that makes them valuable. The only, I think, and I tweeted this out a billion times is women's only real form of agency is their sexuality. That's I would, the first thing they think of when they want attention is to take their shirt, shirts off or go march around an Antifa protest buck naked, right? Because that's what, that's what, pe- that's what men will pay attention to. So let me ask you this, what value added can women bring beyond the sexual to a guy like you? Like a guy who's oh, crunching me? the numbers, who's brought, who's, he, it's like, it's nuts and bolts, man. Oh, what, wow, what man. does she bring? And not just like faking it because that's good. She, oh, so she's a good actress, right? Mm-hmm. But like, what can she genuinely bring to the table that will be value added that goes beyond just the sexual? And we know the sexual is perishable for women. Mm-hmm. What, what would be something that is value added that women can bring to the table? Uh, no, it, it depends on the guy, <clears throat> but there's some some general ones, it, and they're they're not shockers. And I think gals know this. Uh, one, be nice. Just be nice. If you're a feminist, or you got, I got to show you. If you got attitude, dude, go away. Just we're not gonna fight you. Two, related to that, and it, this depends, but generally, submit to the husband. And what I mean by that, there can only be one leader, right? Don't, don't make everything. It's a team decision. Have one person in charge. Now I've seen it where women wear the pants and the men are a little bit more demure. It works because then the guy defers to the wife, but generally it doesn't work that way. There has to be, and it's not because he's a man. There has to be one lead. There cannot be two. And I saw this in ballroom dancing when I taught ballroom dancing for all those years, you'd have these ball busting wives just getting, and I even bought just like, well, I'm trying to help them. It's like, bitch, you trying to help them is by definition leading just submit and let them lead and follow and not only do that do it exuberantly and happily because there's nothing worse than after pulling teeth you tell the, that she finally does it but in a pouting you know apologize to your brother sorry you know that kind of thing you know like really really pissed <laughs> off uh, <laughs> as a, so I that's know, mark that i'm gonna use that as a drop yeah sorry. and so <laughs> so well, what, what will help women to do this is to go and learn to ballroom dance because you'll stop learning to lead very quickly and you'll understand like, oh, I see how this dynamic works. Uh, so that's another thing, you know, uh, is is God almighty, ladies, just support the guy when he just don't question. Just like there's time. He just make the decision a lot easier. Do what he says. 
All right. Assuming he's a good man and isn't leading you off of, off a of pier or anything. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, there's other stuff like, you know, you can cook. I guess that's, I, that hasn't always been a huge thing for me. I, I love it when it happens, but it's more the personality and all that. Um, do not have him ask for sex. That'd be another thing. Like just, Hey, it's uh, and some of that would be, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, raw the girl would have to it presumes he's it. yeah 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 i mean it it, it assumes the guy is holding up his end and and mm -hmm. being attractive as well another thing i just is just me dude sometimes i don't want to plan all the time like have something like hey we're doing this like wow that's great i don't have to worry about that mm -hmm. uh but man it's it's real simple be nice be feminine be supporting uh, there's nothing you know the other stuff oh yeah you could cook or oh you um Here's one, I, you know, of course, what, are you hoping girls are going to listen to this or something? Roll no, or no, no, no. <laughs> I, I wanted to actually, trust me, trust me. Right. Here's, here's when, guys, when guys ask me that, they'll say, they'll be like, why are you, why are, why are we even having this discussion? Who cares? It's like, it's not for the benefit of the girl, it's right. the benefit of you listening to this. So you know what you're getting into. Here's one other thing. It's not necessarily being on top of current events, but at least be able to carry a philosophical conversation, have mm. an independent thought. So, and this would be for the younger gals. If you know, it could even be religion or something like that. Mm -hmm. For God's sake, if all you know is to talk about is TV shows or your worthless sociology degree or whatever you heard on Women's the video, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever it is, this slop that ultimately doesn't matter, like have a little bit of cult. It could even come in the form of watching good movie, you know, watch Butch, Butch Cassie, the Sundance Kid, watch spaghetti westerns, have, you know, have something more to bring to the table that every other liberal arts majoring girl brings that is, is nothing interesting or entertaining. Mm -hmm. that, that'd yeah. be it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, the, uh, the other, other part of this nice little infographic I have here is spending and power. Um, like women account for 80% of healthcare decisions are made by women. 68% of new car purchases decisions are made by women. 75% of women identify themselves as the primary household shopper. 85% of all consumers purchase in the United States are made by women. Women are the primary consumers in the United States right now. And I don't think that this is these these are any coincidence right now. For, yeah, men don't want to shop. Coincidence right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to the store. Uh, uh, seven, seven trillion dollars is contributed by women in the United States in consumer and business spending. So, I even say that's a little low. Do you think that guys are like abdicating? Like they're like, screw it. She's going to make all the decisions. She's going to do the books. Do you think that 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 guys just like again? Is should that maybe that's part of enjoy the decline? Yeah, you want to go take care of the books? Go ahead, honey. Well, a lot of it is guys just don't want to shop. Uh, men also don't do a lot. If you look at men, we, we do more of the big ticket items, including stupid business ideas. Like I'm going to buy a sports bar, mm -hmm. so there's stuff like that. Uh, but do you know if this data is married couples or is this just men and women in general? Because uh, the seven in general, I do have the, I you know. do have some stats for married. Like this was the one that got me. And I, this is one I used, uh, in the book over the course of a family's life, 90% of married women will control its wealth in the United States. That means t only 10% of guys are the ones that are controlling where that wealth is going, like whether it's investments or it's spending or it's the new car or it's the house or where we're going to, where we're going to live. Mm -hmm. and I think that's really kind of damning when you, when you take that and you, you put that against this mythological pay gap. That women constantly, we still like Obama's been using this forever. And you know what? Uh, I think Gore and probably Clinton and everybody else, hell, even Republicans use that. Well, we need to really close up the 70 cents on the dollar thing. It's like, no, dude, that's that's all based on choices. That's all based on what women are preferring to where they want to work, right? right. Like when you look at it job for job, it's actually we pay women almost more for the same work depending on what those particular jobs are. That would be the number one thing big, women could close big, a wage gap with right there. Yes. Uh, I don't exactly. want to hurt anyone's feelings. And then last but not least, I want to throw this one out because I use this also in, in my book, which is uh, according to Uber Facts, and I, I don't know where they pick this up, but um, worldwide women earn $18 trillion, but worldwide women account for the spending of $28 oh. trillion. <laughs> and so I when, when I see numbers like that and people will say, well, Aaron, 
your your numbers are pessimistic. They're they're so, they're doom and gloom. What about romance? What about <laughs> what about idealism? And it's like, okay, well, let's look at some pro women numbers. And you look at that and you go, what about love? <laughs> 18 trillion versus 28 trillion in spending. But what about love? <laughs> what about romance? <laughs> well, a lot of that is because of love and romance. Because the guy's yeah. like, okay, the guy does, if you think about it, you're getting married. Well, obviously, I could see a lot of guys like, well, where do you want to live, sweetheart? You know, because frankly, guys don't care as long as it's safe and near work. I mean, they're a little bit more practical. Mm -hmm. What kind of car do you want? I think men are always trying to do that to, to make their wives or their girlfriends happy. Um, so I think that's where a fair amount of that control is, but that would be called love and romance. Now, if gals would keep a, a ledger somewhere nearby and write, keep it a running tell, like, oh, he spent, you know, $200,000 on me more over the past 10 years than I did him and, and, and chalk that up to love. But, uh, <clears throat> no, I, I don't think they are aware of it or cognizant of it. I think to be perfectly honest, men have always, it's the pussy pass. Starting no. from when the girl turns 13, you get preferential treatment and you, they, and it's not even women's fault. You know, if they've been flooded with attention and money and resources their entire life, that's normal. You know, the, the, the funny thing is when you see the, the 50 year old gal who loses, or, you know, really hits the wall and like, why can't I find a man? And it's like, well, it's too late. You're no longer beautiful. Um, but they're not cognizant and aware of like, oh yeah. Hey, by the way, I uh, I went to the gun range and practice in case we're uh, attacked by an intruder. Oh yeah, by the way, I worked these extras so you could have a safer SUV, even though I'd be comfortable with a with a car. But that that's that's the treatment they've received forever. So it's not uh, uh, aberrant treatment. It's not different treatment. So they just they don't know any better. Um, you know. So and then and then they get to go and, and spend almost twice as much. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, let's also for intellectual much. honesty, six with mm -hmm. with wealth. Keep in mind. Uh, the majority of wealth is held by older people because they're old. They've had time for wealth accrue. And then since men die younger than women, yeah, there's that. that's another factor that's going to heavily skew that where it doesn't yeah. surprise me that 90% of the wealth is owned by women. Because, And I bet you I'd like to see a co-correlation between what's the age of those women. And I'm sure it's your women in 60 plus category. Yeah, I, I think that's one thing that we sort of we skip over is women are on average are going to live an extra 10, 10 years on, on men, period. And then when you look at the, you know, men are more likely to die in violent crime. Men are more likely to be homeless. Men are more likely to uh, have, you know, particular diseases, things like that. And we just, we don't take those into account when we go, oh, well, we need to have special dispensation or we need to have some sort of government, you know, oversight for like homeless men. We don't talk about that. It's always homeless women's shelters. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, you're always going to run into gender issues when it comes to those things. But then you look at the, the economics of that, like you were saying, is that you've got guys who are just sort of exiting the game and how does that affect a country's well the economy of that country and not just the sexual economy but like just the overall like the gdp and everything else that goes along with it i got this um from this guy's this uh excuse me fred <laughs> friedman sowell <laughs> says uh historically barriers made rogue women self-correct currently men must if they are creepy childless failed to launch uh, in the future, uh, will something make women self-correct once again, like the 1960s or before the 1960s? Before that, um, it's going to have to be an economic crisis. Uh, the government would have, and in short, the government would have years going to have to hit. Yeah. Well, or the, the government just runs out of money, or it's inflated away. Uh, where right now there's a whole host of uh, programs and institutions and entities and at least the United States where, where they don't need men. Women really don't need men. You can one, they can earn their own money. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of jobs women can do. Uh, women can get their own education. I encourage them to do that. I encourage women to become engineers and doctors and, and you don't need men. Uh, and the government, if let's say you're not particularly talented or you're just an idiot and you have more kids than you could afford, or you major in the wrong thing and you need government help. You don't need a man. You, you just go on, on the government dole. So mm -hmm. until, man's main competitor that would be the government goes away women have no financial need for men and it's it's relegated to only being romantic mm -hmm. uh so you know like 98 percent has been eliminated so mm -hmm. I, let me ask you let me ask you i got i got another one here because this this is actually something from my book it's funny it's interesting how much crossover i had in my my marriage uh chapter of my book and and the book of numbers here um are you familiar with a uh, it's an old school principle or old school laws called the coverture laws? Are you familiar with those? 
No. Coverture laws are this, and they they were from like the Victorian era, like the, the mid 1800s, late 1800s, somewhere around there. And they lasted for quite some for quite some time. And this is what um, like when women, especially like militant feminists will say, well, you know, women were treated like property and they were they couldn't own property or they could they were treated like chattel. They were just like a, a, a servant that men had, you know, and. The fact of the matter is, is men, uh, women actually could own property, even as late as, like, say, the mid-1800s, but it was the coverture laws of that time that would remove that property from them if they married. So, a woman who had uh, came from wealth, and of course, this is this is only according to like the socioeconomic statuses at that time. So if you, if a woman, if a man's daughter inherited his business, his, his land, his home, uh, his property, because it was, you know, generational wealth, it could be passed on to the, to that woman, that woman, as long as she remained single, could hang on to that. It was still in her name. She could make the decision she wanted to. She could run the business if she wanted to. But according right. to the coverture laws, is that anytime that woman would get married, the transfer of ownership of that of those assets would transfer over to the husband. And that's where they that's where a lot of women sort of like lost their minds, right? Because they said, well, you know, you can't you know, only the husband can own this and the, the man can only own this stuff. And so it's not entirely true. And so I was looking at the coverture laws. And so if a woman has property or whatever, it, the, the, the principle of that, it seems very sexist and patriarchal, right? But the principle right. of this is that if that man goes into a relationship or goes into a, a marriage with that woman, then his, her assets become his. But the reason for that is because it is to protect the husband against the bad decisions, the financial decisions that that oh, woman okay. might make with that business that she inherited, with the land she inherited, or or making uh, like because up until that point, that woman could still do that and may go enter into business contracts that were legally binding. If she was married to the man who might also have a business or who might also at least have the potential to have that business, then it protects him against her bad decisions. Because all of those assets transfer over to him, and he becomes the authority of those of those things. And so, he has the ability to execute on the. He has yeah, control of the company. At exactly. Time. So it was really more to protect the interests of the husband in that situation from bad decisions by the woman. So, like for instance, if she if she would bankrupt her business and it would affect him, it would affect him and his family because they would have to like pay for. I don't think there was LLC laws; like they couldn't be like protected <laughs> from that kind of stuff, right, right? right? So, so they would be they would go into the poorhouse because of the decisions that the wife made with, you know, the the property and the businesses and the things that she, that she could own at that time. Those were that was called the coverture laws. And so what I used in, in my book when I was talking about marriage is because I was making a case for uh, that today, the way that we do marriage, and I wish it was different. Like, don't get me wrong. I have a, I have a very good marriage. I have a great marriage uh, is what I think most guys would call ideal, but like, I'll get it from like the trad concept and the trad concept will say, well, Rollo's against marriage. And it's like, no, I'm against marriage the way we do it now. Because the point I was making is that today, the marriage as we do it contractually is an unconscionable contract. It is a contract that you would not, and that's a legal term, not my term. Uh, it is a contract that no one would enter into if they if they were in their right mind, if they weren't drunk or they weren't like just completely insane to enter into this contract. And there's actually uh, as an unconscionable contract, you're actually protected against going into like things that say jump off the cliff if you know if you sneeze or something something stupid, right? And so th I I read a whole like a whole lot of different the legal analysts when they're talking about like marriage, when it comes to like how we do it now. And it's technically an unconscionable contract because you wouldn't enter into a business under the same terms and sure, make with equivalent risks. And make everything. guys use this all the time. I get it, but it's actually a legal term. And so what I was doing is I was making this comparison between that and the coverture laws. And so I was saying right now is that it is just like it was for women back in the 1800s. It was in their financial and maybe lifetime best interests not to get married if they had property, if they had money, if they had a business, if they had all their ducks in a row, right? Financially, wow. whatever, economically, it, they have more power being single than they will be when they get into a marriage. Because once you do that, then you then you forfeit they, your assets, you right. that and everything else comes in. And the way that the marriage laws are now is to benefit the woman. Is to protect that woman because the it's the reversed way divorce exec. It's a reverse coverture law for men 
today. So, so when, a, when a man goes in, now he, ha- he runs the risk of losing his business, his property, and all of anything else that's like a debt for sure, community debt, um, when, he, when he enters into it. Now, granted, that's state by state, but for the overall, it, a man has more power over his own decision-making in his life being single than he does being married. And until those incentives change, nothing else is going to change. So we've got we've got that going on. Like most guys will say, I never want to get married because I don't want to lose half my stuff, right? I get that all, for, especially from like the 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 evangelical, you know, uh, traditional conservative set. Like, wow, you guys are just little boy men because you're worried about losing half your stuff. It's all about me, 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 right? Like, no, it's that. It's not even so much about that. It's about my the way that I can best benefit my life and even maybe even benefit my children is to not get married because there's a disincentive for men to get married because right. of a reverse coverture law right now. So I wanted to ask you that, like when it comes to marriage from a contractual base basis, do you think that it is better for guys to just remain unmarried? Because you're going to get. Absolutely. I I was going to say you're probably going to agree with that. Yeah. No, the the legal risks are just not. uh, No, Uh, finance. No, that that's a no brainer. And I don't you don't need to read my book to figure that out. Uh, it's, it's, I think everyone has had a dad to cut divorce maybe two or three times, you know, Mm -hmm. but no, there's. There's no, and I kind of an interest. I even had a Rich Cooper and Terrence Pop on the show because I've never been divorced. I don't know what it's like. And mm-hmm. uh, even though you had two separate legal systems, Canadian and U.S., it was very eye-opening where it's like you, as a person who's never gone through it, you can't believe like, is it this bad? And mm-hmm. then you find out like, yeah. And and uh, and so, no, there's, it's not worth the legal risks, not worth the financial risks. It, it's certainly not when you consider the increase in suicide worth the emotional, psychological risks. Uh, no, there is, there is no reason, none whatsoever. And you have the perfect and intellectually honest and actually it's just too legally risky. And, mm-hmm. and even girls will, will, you know, like, well, I guess you're right. I'm like, yep. So it, yeah, no, that, that's uh, that's one one Yeah. I was, I was going to say, cause I get it from guys who will, they'll try to say, well, a real man takes those risks. A real man does this. And, and so they're, F- what they F1. do they, yeah, exactly. Well, whenever I hear that, it's not like a lot of guys say, well, that's shaming. It's like the MGTOW side of things say, well, that's shaming. So it's not so much shaming as it is conditioning you to believe that to get the masculinity badge, right? To get the ma- to be to get the manhood badge that you've like sort of made a subjective. Who's definition. issuing? Who's the authority on the masculinity? Right? Badge? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I think that a lot of the social conventions that we see today are reactions to exactly what we're talking about. It's, 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 uh, there's such a disincentive for men to get married. You want to know why we have such a low marriage rate? It's not because men want to be boy men. It's not because men want to be perpetuate their adolescence. You know, maybe that's a, maybe that's a, a byproduct of that, but it's not because of that. That's not the, the, the causation is not the correlation. Right. right. And so, people don't understand I me. Mean, we, we're talking about acquisition costs. I even break it down, you know, acquisition costs, maintenance costs. And then there's a sub chapter called disposal costs. And it's what's the average cost mm-hmm. of a divorce. What, what can you expect to pay in alimony and all? And it depends on state, but I think that was like, uh, like on average, $148,000, uh, expense. It, it, it's horrific. Mm-hmm. Do you see because of the decline in marriage, like marriage was, it was, I mean, the way we used to do it back in, you know, the fifties, right. Father knows best, the nuclear family. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's still kind of this misnomer. I think a lot of people still think of, of family as, Oh, mom, dad, a uh, brother and sister and, you know, golden retriever in the front yard kind of thing. Right. And so we see that as sort of like an economic driver, um, for certainly Western cultures, anyways, like monogamy, uh, that kind, if whatever your iteration of that kind of monogamy is, like with the, the nuclear family or the basis of the nuclear family, is an economic driver. Do you still think that it can be in the future? Do you think it's like something that we should just oh, it, right now? No, it all, it always has been and it always will be. All right, because uh, what else have we got going on in life but gals? You know, you tell me, I mean, it's, it's when, yeah, it's the number. What do you want? Most like women. And it's been empirically proven given how much men pursue, expend and invest in women and women. They'll never admit to it, but the best thing they got going on in this planet is men. Now they've been programmed to not believe that. And deep down inside, I don't think they believe it, but they're going to act on it because I guess they're a promised value, meaning and purpose that didn't rely on someone else. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if, if a guy doesn't have a family, now do we see that bear up 
uh, in the single men world where they only make a fraction of what married men do. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also see it in, in the economic figures. You see it in the choices, the behaviors of men. They, I, I know it sounds cheap and minor, but obesity is probably one of the hugest roadblocks to future economic growth because mm-hmm. what guy wants to bang a fat chick? You got to be physically attracted. You want to talk about humanity, like, you know, the muse effect, like they're a girl would inspire you and, mm-hmm. and you, whoever wrote his greatest poems or symphonies or whatever, because he was inspired by a woman. Yeah, well, work. that's true. They do you, do you, do you remember the, um, it was an article in China. They had these Chinese programmers, all guys, mm-hmm. and they're trying to figure out how to get the guys more productive. All they did was hire like three beautiful girls to go in there and wear nice dresses and just treat the guys nice, see if they mm-hmm. needed tea or anything. And productivity shot up 60%. <laughs> I mean, it's like, duh. The only reason to get out of bed is because you got a cute girl with blue eyes. You know, that's it. Yeah. And then, but, like you know, the hot at the gym who inspires you to like lift and right, to lift more. <laughs> right. No, it, it, you know, it, 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 you know, it, um, don't tell me you weren't in track or playing football and all of a sudden the girls would be watching. You didn't get a little 5% boost there. You'll make sure well, I'm really going to throw this ball. Mm-hmm. So no, that's, that's the only reason to go to town, man. It's, it's the girls, but not this generation. I mean, not this, not this 48 octane gas. No. Mm-hmm. And, and so if this presents men a very, Maybe for the first time in human history, it's like, boy, you got to think of a life outside of women. You know, like what's your life point and purpose going to be? But economically speaking, yeah, the only reason we got electricity and we're doing this right now and, and vaccines and they gave me that mean ass chemical to throw in my eyes. I'm like, yeah, and like, oh, it's good for you. Some, dude- Some guy figured out because he wanted to get laid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's hard for guys to accept, too, um, particularly now, because. Again, when I was saying before is, is when I talk to guys, I, I, I posed this question at one point. I said, if you could take a pill that would magically like remove your, like salt Peter, right? If you could magically remove your libido and you would never think about girls ever again, would you take it? And like I had probably like 70, 80% of guys saying, hell yeah, I would take it because then I would be able to focus on my mission or whatever and not have to worry about porn and not be addicted to porn and no fap and this. And, that. and I'm like, yeah, but don't you know that that would be, that would kill your drive that would kill like what it is that you would be you know you would be thinking about anyways right that's the same i hate to call it energy because i don't want to call it energy but it's the same angst it's that same motivation that drives innovation is the same one that drives guys to want to get laid that's why they come up with shit that can dilate your eyes (laughs) think about and think about the mental exercise men have to go through to get girls in constantly Mm. changing environments constantly changing girls constantly changing generations and cultures Mm. that's a that's a that's a mind tease. You really got to work your brain for that. And you have to be incredibly creative. And I would say those skills also parlay into entrepreneurship, innovation, technological innovation, or just being a better, more efficient worker. So no, it, it, you know, I, in the grand scheme of things, you wouldn't be much without the opposite sex. Right. But for, for, as I could tell now, and based on the numbers, man, yeah, this is a generation you may want. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not change. on time. Yeah, something's got to change. Yeah, Some, yeah. Good. So some's yeah. So you might as well be focusing on yourself. But I don't know if I'd be taking a, a castration pill just yet. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> sterilizing, sure, medically sterilizing yourself. Stuart says this, and then this is actually kind of gets into my last ones here. It's um, it says uh, women need men more than they want them, and men want women more than they need them. Any thoughts? Right. I'll say this, before you start, <laughs> let me say this. I have always said I think I believe this. I still do today. Uh, men and women are better together than they are apart. We we work better together as long as it's like this symbiosis, right? As long as we're going by like our our innate drives and understanding ge- our you know conventional gender roles, conventional masculinity, conventional femininity. I think we're better together than we are apart, or we have the potential to be better together than we are apart. That's how we got to where we're at right now. Your thoughts. 100 percent true. Why these aren't hard? <laughs> it makes know, it's not hard to get. Right. Well, let me would you like me to need, tell you want, stories? We both need and we both want. Right, right. No, and 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 thank God, because if you had the exact same desires and wants balance between men and women, we'd either have nothing to do with each other at all, or we'd outbreed ourselves uh-huh. uh, because we'd want sex that much. So I there's a reason there's a yin and a yang and a balance. But I'll I'll tell you a story about this dance couple I knew in one of my classes. Uh, he was an engineer and she was just a uh, smoking hot for 45, 50 year old uh, woman at the time. And uh, you could just tell because she she helped them. She let them lead. They were the best dance couple. 
he'd spank her in the ass every once in a while. Uh, and I take him on field trips. Not there's just this couple. I take my students on field trips. You talk to them. They were happy. You know why? Cause she loved him and she put him first in her life and he put her first in his life and it just worked. And I don't see what's so effing difficult about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not, but, when you get brainwashing starting from five years old to 25 year old, when you're finally out with your master's degree in, in uh, public health administration, I could see where, you know, two decades of indoctrination and brainwashing to like, there's a threat. Those are the bad guys. I could see where that has completely um, maligned and malformed uh, women's expectations, desires, wants, perceptions, everything, everything that they view men as. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's tragic. It's sad, uh, but it still doesn't change the fact that that was one of the best couples I saw. They're both very highly successful. They're incredibly happy and they're good looking people for their age and they're the happiest people that there were. So yes, if you want to be happy, uh, yeah, you're probably going to be happiest with a good person for you. Mm. Not just, not just a girl saw, but a good <laughs> or I want a wife who doesn't speak English or from a foreign country. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, and, I, Totally. So that, yeah, that's the idealistic goal. But given the world we live in, you got to come up with a plan B now, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's that's where I wanted to end with this. I you know, and I'll uh, this is actually kind of gets us to where I want to go. It says, do you think more guys will become like TFM? TFM is turkey. <laughs> I love TFM. I do too. I th I don't know why people can, you know I I get it that he's a little whack when it comes to like you know sex I, dolls, I right? He comes to his conclusions, right? I don't think his analysis is wrong. OK, I, I, I'm not going to advocate for sex dolls anytime soon right. or, or anthropomorphic. Taking women's rights away. I'm not for that either. No. I'm not for that either, but only because I don't I think it's and it's untenable. It's unfeasible. And it's again, I, I think that a lot and I'm not going to say black pill guys, but certainly MGTOW guys, you get the analysis right. They're they're just red pill guys who took it a step further and said, well, here's our conclusions and here's what we're going to do. And I can't get behind a lot of the stuff that they that because for me uh, it seems like a lot more defeatist than anything else. Now, a cue cue every comment that says, "Oh, Rolla doesn't really understand me." Yes, I do. Okay, and until you guys come together with a collective definition of what MGTOW is, can I be married? Can I not be married? Can I be, do I have to be an incel? Do I not have to be an incel? Do I have to be black? Whatever it is, the way that I define I just. Just clarify, you know, clear the air here. The way I the way I define MGTOW is this, is that they are guys who no longer or maybe never did um, make women the metric of their own self-worth. Right. They never they say, you know what, I'm I'm me and uh, you're not going to affect my self-esteem. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And you if you want to be a part of that, that's fine. Guess what that is? That's called the red pill. That's called mental point of origin. So yes, I 100% agree with the analysis. It's just simply I'm I don't see how you affect a lot of the things that you think you want to like the the conclusions and the solutions. And so that's uh, that's my last question for you is so what if I want to have a kid? Do you, you don't have any oh, kids? So no, I don't. No. Um, <laughs> you're, and here's the thing: you're gonna the the gal is gonna have to come before the kid because you're gonna have to pick the right woman exactly to have a kid. And man, good luck to you. Um, it's bad. I mean, it was bad back in my day, but you know, all the numbers I'm getting and this is why I think Myron Gaines is how bad it was back in our day. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, but I mean, this is why I really appreciate kind of the work and the observations of Myron Gaines. Cause he's a younger guy. He's on the front lines mm -hmm. and especially on the internet. Uh, yeah, guys, you got to dial in your expectation. I even think that's one of the, the things in the concluding chapter is like, you'll drive yourself nuts having what you want when it's not available. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you want to have kids, that's nice, but I wanted to go out with Jennifer Aniston, you know, and it didn't happen, mm -hmm. but I didn't ruin my life over it. And ha wanting to have kids is a little bit more guttural and Darwinistic and core to your being, but you all better get used. Cause if you choose the wrong gal and you bring a kid into that world, you, you're a child abuser. I mean, you're, you're going to raise that kid in hell, man. So uh, good luck, find the right one. Uh, but, I have a plan B. And if you don't believe me, go read the statistics book because you'll be like, Oh, is that bad? You're like, yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and I, I try to explain this as best I can in, in the marriage section of, of uh, religion. I wish things were different. I wish it could be. 
I wish we could have that. I wish you could have I, like guys. One of the reasons I don't. I wish you didn't stand me up twice already. You know, I have well, a lot of things we're not going to get. Get your happy ass out here. I got two snowmobiles. You can. Get, I promise I won't. Put on the, uh, oh yeah, go ride a snowmobile with Rolo. Sure. I'll just. Yeah. Here, let's put this. In. <laughs> well, I was going to say is like I wish it could be different. I wish marriage could be something that is sort of like a union between men and women when it comes to uh, understanding conventional gender roles. I wish you, I, I, that's why I don't use my own marriage as sort of like a proof of concept for guys mm -hmm. because I'm not you, you're not me. You're not going to find what I have, right? Because you, the same circumstances, the same, you know, conditions. Yeah, we, we're old as fuck too. I mean, it's, it's long gone I and mean, different kids, different generation. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. And it's like, I, I do, you can do the best with what you have have you know you do the best with uh i remember i remember one time i asked my dad i because i for the life of me could not figure out why my father ever would get with my mom right because they seem like very very different people right and i remember asking him one time and he says it seemed like a good idea at the time <laughs> and i like yeah, yeah, because you're using, you're going with what you have with the, with the education you you go to war with the army that you have right you, you go and you make the decisions based on the on your best Best, best principle. I have guys asking me right now, uh, Rola, are you going to write a book on game? Yeah, okay, I'll write a book on game. I, I'm planning on it. I think that's probably going to be the next thing. And I mean game in the sense of like not so much a prescription, but like why things work the way they work. And here's some like maybe best practices. But when I talk about game, when I talk about those things, it's like what's the end result? Right. What's the end result of alpha fucks and beta bucks? Like what's the end result of going like your game is going from single and sexless to a hopefully finding a girl that you really enjoy banging and so much so that you're going to commit to her and you're going to start a family. That's how you get human tribalism. That's how you get national because your first tribe is your family, right? How do you get that? Because that's how important hypergamy is, right? You have to know those things. You have to be able to like, I, I hate to say vet because most guys don't vet, but when they do vet, they vet with the information and the best education that they have at that time. And so when, myself or when Aaron pops off with like, here's the numbers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're going with, with the best information. And I guess sometimes for some guys, it's going to dissuade them from doing that, but you've got to, we got to find better ways. There's, I think there's better ways than getting a sex doll and a dog. Yeah. yeah well, but right? and, you know, do what you want. I, I, I can't blame anyone for doing anything as long as you don't hurt anyone else. But uh, the mm -hmm. first thing you can do, I think this goes for every guy out there is to get, your expectations dialed in and aligned with reality as accurately and closely as possible. And because that mm -hmm. way you're not going to have any, at least you're going to spare yourself the mental frustration and pain, a psychological price you're going to pay uh, when you realize, Oh, the, the lay of the land is really like this. So that's the one we, we can't guarantee you will get the girls. We can't guarantee you will have a son and you will name him. You the second mm -hmm. uh, We I, I can guarantee you, that it will take a lot of it will reinstall sanity and, mm. and make you make your future life a lot a lot easier and a lot uh, a lot less painful right there's got to be a better way there's got to be so something's coming right I, I, I yeah we may not be alive for it i mean you know the money yeah. printer could go burr quite some time I, just just right. don't, don't expect that to happen either the, the only okay look if you guys are looking for something okay i call it the show okay i call it i have enjoy the decline but i also say enjoy the show and the show, which is completely vain mm. and self-serving and, and shallow is you guys were lied to. You're very upset. You're very frustrated. Uh, you're, and there has to be some kind of justice. Rollo talked about it. The she economy, Morgan Stanley coming up, just watch. You're going to see a generation. That, well, my generation is going to be the first one, but the millennial women are going to kick it into high gear with generation spinster. And you're going to see a bunch of miserable women who believe that their degrees and their career and money was more important than love, more important than children, hugging them and, cu and, and cuddling them and, and, you know, whatever, you know, family thing they lost and, and they will never admit it. You'll never, but by God, you could fill the Pacific ocean with the tears are going to be crying themselves to sleep at night. And, and I can't prove that or anything like that. But if you're looking for something's got to give, there's balance in everything. There's equilibrium in physical right. formulas and, and, and economics. They're not just, yeah, look at us, girls. Like, it's not uh, the sin, not sin city, uh, sex in the city. It's not that 24-7 now running into its fourth F in decade. All right. They're miserable. They're fat. They have worthless degrees. They're in debt. 
They ain't got no man because they don't need one, and they're going to pound that. But, guys, just watch. Just enjoy it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm old now, and it's hilarious to go on Facebook and look at the girls back in high school and college. Like, holy crap. That, mm -hmm. that's, and it's not what I wanted. I wanted them to be happy. And Mary, I was like, well, I remember you're kind of a pain in the ass. And then you had attitude and lip. Well, now you're overweight. It's over for you. So it's not what you want, but it's the show you're going to get. So mm -hmm. do you want to go to the one show showing on the one theater in the small little town or not? You don't have to. You could totally go philosophy or something else like that. But if you wanted, if something's got to give, what's going to give is that basically a generation, you include millennials and now Gen Z girls, if they decide to go there, two and a half generations of women will piss away their life. Yeah. So if that I gives you some kind of satisfaction or vengeance, there you go. I think, yeah, exactly. Don't get too happy. If they're too, you're they too happy or too pissed off about those things. But I think in my estimate, I think if you were ever like one of the reasons why I'm like, I'm not, against, I'm not against like, you know, I, I want women to have rights, right? I want them to have their, yeah, no, their I, yeah. I want them to be, but I, the, my, in my, my hesitation in all of that is I also want them to be held accountable and liable for the decisions that they make with those rights, right? With all of those, all that new authority. Great. Then fine. Don't hold men accountable as fail safes for your bad decisions. And so I think that a lot of the bad decisions we're all we're seeing in on a societal level right now, as far as social conventions are concerned, is we want to foist all of those bad decisions off on guys because that traditionally, conventionally, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to rely it on real good. Health, take care of the problems for us, right? <laughs> Don't forget, it feels good too. So <laughs> and it feels good, right? Yeah, but I've got the manhood badge over here. Now you have to uh, take care of the the bad decision, the liabilities of the bad decisions that I made, and then you can be a man, right? That's mm -hmm. and you can apply that across the board to all kinds of different decisions that they make but i so again am i do i want to take women's rights away no but i want them to be held accountable and responsible and liable whatever it is for the decisions that they make i don't see that as being such a big deal but we're already seeing social conventions that are trying to convince guys that it's their responsibility to do exactly that so when we have guys that are like say or we have women who will uh who will try to foist off like you know being a single mom it's your duty to be be the step parent oh, of this yeah. kid no it's not and but well but you'll be a real man if you are no i won't <laughs> no sorry i i i'm going to turn that down but the, the thing is is i think that when we look at the social conventions for like things like uh for like that we try to popularize the idea that it should be men's responsibility or masculine duty to do that and you're going sort of old order thinking you're going old school like responsibilities and maybe in the past yeah maybe that was prior to the sexual revolution i'm sure it was but now if you are getting resources through the government or directly or indirectly through men those decisions are yours that's uh, all i would say is be i want women to be accountable that's what that's I, I don't think that that's too much to ask no and it's going to happen um <laughs> Because, the, you know, a, a government check can not hug you back at night. I mean, yeah. pay for food, clothing, and shelter. Uh, but feel, you know, Do you feel bad for women? Do you feel bad? There's a P yeah, no, there's a there's an element like because you do I because they were so lied to. Just in that sense, right? I think that they're they're sold a bill of goods and we're headed mm -hmm. down. A, we're, we're headed down a really bad way. Like it's all it is is segregation, right? It's like maybe girls over here, men over here. And it's not like because women made that choice. It's because they were told from five years old by Disney yeah. Pixar, you don't need no man, right? And so when they, they're 55, now they got no man. Yeah, and 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 I, I feel bad a little bit, not a lot, because I've had to endure that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, But I do feel bad because they were lied to. And it, it would have been so, it's, it's like it's like World War I. It's like, why did we fight this? Why did so many people die for, because some guy got assassinated in the Balkans? You know, couldn't they have figured that? Um, why is the United States here? Why even China got dragged into that conflict? And it's it's just kind of like uh, you know, and and I, I hate to put blame, uh, but th th it's up to the women to really kind of wake up and, and just mm -hmm. ask them. So just be logical. Do you think being a weapons grade bitch? Is what's do you think being fat is what's gonna get to me? Are you even capable of considering that there's other another party involved in this called men and they might have their own sent you know sentience and desires and essentially the and I I just don't see any of that. Uh, and it bears out again in the numbers in the books. I mean, some of the polling data about what women want most, it's so sad. You know, there's what what they say, and that's not even that good, but then their actions. Mm -hmm. like, I want to get you know, every girl wants to get married. Well, how many actually are gonna put the effort into it? So 
it, it's and it's it's sad. It's tragic. I wish it was better for gals. It would be better for gals. But this is the world we're in. And and mm -hmm. you, got, you know, this is the card. These are the hands you were dealt. The cards you were dealt in your hand. And you know, my little poker player book tells you how to play them, mm -hmm. uh, or at least what your stats are going up against the house. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I think a, another thing is is your finiteness and your mortality. Like, look, guys, you got one life. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could chase the girls. You can go ahead and. But man, invest your time wisely and make sure you got mm -hmm. something else going on. Because if you, if, and we've seen this, like guys were women, that's all they wanted in life. They didn't have any plan B. They didn't, they didn't have anything else going on. And it's kind of like Donnie Brasco where Al Pacino's character never makes it as a big guy in the mafia and then ends mm -hmm. up getting killed. I think in the end, it's like you wasted awesome. your life, you know? And so I'm telling the guys like, yeah, okay. You know, I know you want to go chase after those girls, but by gosh, man, the numbers are bad. And please, please think of something else to do as well while you're here. So, right. so at least your life isn't wasted. You have some kind of accomplishment or achievement you could point to. I'm going to get to these last two um, super chats. I got to get going though too. So okay, yeah, I got one last question for you, but this is, this is just silly. Cappy, you're not too old to have kids. What do you think? I have made it very clear that for one point, you know about my offer to all women yeah, across Cappy, the world. Cappy, let's just, let's just settle this right now. Let's, let's get this out for everybody watching. What? Did you get snipped? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, you did. Okay, so when you have I was thirty. Yeah, no, but you can still have it extracted. But, okay, <laughs> uh, I have made the offer many times, and I'll just spread the word. Any woman in the world can have my seed for one point five million after tax, and an incredibly long legal disclaimer that says I got nothing to do with that kid. Of course, I can have kids until I'm fine. Yeah, I don't want kids. So, but if a woman really wants this fine genetic material, <laughs> and and just to be intellectually honest, so we don't waste anyone's time. Sorry, ladies, I'm only five nine. Screw my ingenious high Q, my ability to ballroom dance, my incredible, clever wittiness, and and, and funny, now, or my motorcycle riding ability. Yeah, yeah just five nine and completely genetic trash. But there was but still some one point five million. Some old rich lady <laughs> wants to slum it with a 5.9 for 1.5 million. There you go. Oh man. Okay. Last, uh, last super chat. Don't give me any more guys. Uh, although what Aaron says is true, the U S census and current population survey data seem to indicate the marriage rate has not dropped as much as we would expect. Actually, I can show you the data for that. It's actually as low as it's ever been uh, as of 2020, who is still getting married in gen in gen Y. Um, I don't know. I'm not I, old enough yet. I, I'd imagine look, that. I would have to look at that because I can show you the stats. Actually, I, I they're quoted actually in my book, so you can look that up. All right, my last question for you is this: sure. so and, and and not a bullshit question, but um, I get this I get this all the time, and guys will say or women will say this too, um, and usually sort of male feminist allies or guys who are like sort of the traditional conservative guys are like you know the, the what I call blue pill alpha guys. They'll say that if men were better, women would be better. Uh, the reason we have the women we have today is because they're the result of men not turning them into what they ought to be, you know, like coercing women or, or taking like, – like your masculine responsibility is to take over the choices of, of women. And the reason we find ourselves in such dire straits today is because uh, women are basically the results of men. And men are – so my question to you is, is – um, are men responsible for the state of women today? No, no. Um, and the, the, it's kind of the chicken or the egg. Did men go to pot first and then women follow? Did women go to pot first and men follow? Mm -hmm. Women went to pot first. Uh, but not again, by the, they were conditioned and brainwashed. Um, mm -hmm. And you could kind of see this empirically because who files most of the divorces? It's women. Well, why did you say yes to the guy? You know, what, why did you go through this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Um, and then also you can look at it and the bias in society, whether it's rah, rah, you go girl, moxie, starting a kindergarten. I don't know if you ever saw the poster at the school in Seattle where it says girls are perfect or women are perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just, it's, and, and my God, you're, you hate men with toxic masculinity ads on Gillette. Um, I, I, we could just go on and on and on. Uh, now men have, when I did the research for the book, men have certainly let themselves go too. And we could argue whether that's reactionary to women. Or, it's not, it's inexcusable. Men are not mm -hmm. exactly, you know, you're unemployed, you're living at home, take women out of it. You're still a loser. Get off your ass, lose the weight, get a job. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> but yes, this was, this was uh, not 100%, but squarely the majority, the women in instigated this. And, uh, therefore, what the 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 
solution is going to have to come from women. They're going to have to change their minds or next generation, which is more likely to happen. Another generation of women are going to be raised with not such a hate for men or more like, wow, let's work with men. I like men, you know, what's wrong with, with being at home and raising kids, or maybe mm -hmm. they just adhere to their genetic desires, whatever. But until that, uh, Overton window moves that way or it changes. Uh, I, I don't, I, the, the indoctrination and programming is just too thorough, too complete and too consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, men will also have a responsibility. Uh, I don't want to just let men off the hook uh, because you guys are a bunch of fat asses. A lot of you are a bunch of losers. And mm -hmm. I mean, look, I'm not saying you got to make six figs, but move out of your effing parents house <laughs> and stop being some soy boy leftist cuck. I mean, God, just, you know, it just you can the epitome couple is uh casio cortez and her boyfriend you're just like what what in yeah. god's name yeah. you know like what guys you know for your own sake look look like uh john wayne or somebody anybody but don't don't be seth rogan all right That's prince just, harry and Meghan markle are like the perfect example they're the epitome of of feminism versus blue pill cuckolded beta boy soy boy not yeah the, I, I I don't know this for a fact, but I'm just going to say this. My read on Meghan Markle is she's very much BPD, and he is very much so blue pill that she's got him locked into her narrative. But like when we use them as sort of like the celebrity couple or whatever, mm -hmm. that is like the uh, that is the, the effigy of of this age when it comes to to both of those. But I I'm of the opinion, and that I agree with you 100. percent Is that I think that women definitely bear some responsibility. Oh yeah, in their state right now, and if they didn't in the past, they sure as hell do now. Because you're at a yeah. point right now where you have all this authority, and you don't want any responsibility or any kind of liability, or if you you want fail safes, uh, you want men to be there to sort of you, you know want, make you sure want you want men. Yeah. They will, they want men to like fat chicks. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, okay, you can't get any more delusional. Like, all right, fine. I, I am, I, you know, and this is why I am so much sympathetic towards the big tail guys. Like, yeah, I just, I understand. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the book is the uh, book of numbers. Let me go grab the thing again. There it is right there. Go pick it up on Amazon. Um, and, uh, hopefully you don't, uh, hang yourself as a MGTOW for this, but, but, uh, it's, uh, oh, I got the Greyhound cam there. Um, but anyway, so, uh, new, new book out. How long has it been out? You, you, you published this back in about, November, uh, November, right? it's two months. Yeah. It was in December. Mm -hmm. I made it for Christmas. The uh, audio book, uh, <clears throat> came out two weeks ago or so. So it's all mm -hmm. three formats. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been out a little bit and finally, well, you know, with the seminars and everything, it right. finally you have time now to actually do some advertising and market it, but yeah, so it's available all, all formats on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go and pick that up, uh, get a good read, especially with the numbers and stuff that you deserve to be educated. I would say, you know, amongst, if, if you're going to make the decision, like when, when guys tell me, so well, marriage is the worst decision you can make. How would you ever do anything like that? I'm like, I'm not anti-marriage. I'm anti the way we do it now. And I'm anti, I didn't see it coming. I wish I would have known. Oh, good. you mean I could lose this much money? You mean that's the ROI on all of this? Um, so pick that up and educate yourself. Also, my uh, my book, uh, Religion, is out now as well. Um, you can find that on Amazon. It's been out for a month. Uh, it is only in two formats until March, right, Sam? Sam's doing the read for Audible. We're trying to get that out before March or get that out at least during March. So uh, that's coming up soon. But you can find the Kindle and you can find the uh, print version of it on Amazon as well. Uh, all the links to his uh, to um, Aaron's book and my book are in the description. So check that out. And uh, maybe we'll have you on Rule Zero on Saturday. I don't know. We'll see. You're, you're a regular yeah. on Rule Zero now. You're part of the extended family. Oh, and boy. Do oh, big time, man. Cool. Uh, yeah, we also do the uh we also do this little fun game called D and D. Do, do I get my masculinity badge now that I'm an official member of Rule Zero? Yes, you do. Okay, you boy, wow, I need to make day. one of those up. Yes, balls have finally dropped for Cappy here. That's yeah. Nice. Hey, and and you are one of the principal characters, I should say, on the the uh, masculine geek masculine D and D show that we do uh, at least once a month. Sometimes we do it twice a month. We're gonna do the last. I think we're gonna finish up this whole kind of storyline or this whole adventure on Wednesday. Uh, the 10th right yeah the uh, 10th of february so that's coming up next wednesday uh anything you want to tell everybody before we go no uh just link is linked a uh, book is linked down below i got other books uh if you click on my amazon page but of particular interest to the audience here would probably be bachelor pad economics and yeah. then i'd also say curse of the high iq 
<clears throat> which has nothing to do with red pill stuff. It's just something intellectual people would like. And then um, I have a consulting company called assholeconsulting.com and that's about it. And yeah, I'll probably see uh, uh, Saturday. I might, I might be able to make, I got to look at my schedule cause I might be interviewing with someone else as well, but uh, mm -hmm. I might, I might stop on by and say hi to you guys. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, I'll, we'll, I'll take us out with this. I had to put that in. So that is, that's a sound drop from Myron's show, just in case you were wondering. Myron had that drop? Really? Yeah, said, Why would, it really sounds so yeah, not irony. Funny. Thank you, by the way. I got a bunch of sound drops from people last night. So. All right, man. Thanks for thanks for joining me, Cappy. We'll do this again. Uh, this is uh, the Rational Mail. Uh, what is it? Statler and Waldorf <laughs> signing off. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for